Well, thank you, Reese. And we know the situation for the college football playoff now, but there is still a lot to be determined when it comes to Mac football. As we're in the glass bowl in Toledo, as Mac West football takes center stage on this Tuesday night, it is a big time showdown between these two teams as ESPN College Football is presented by Ram Trucks. Who's going to wind up in Detroit for the Mac? championship game. Well, out of the West, one of these two teams certainly have the inside track for that. Right now, Toledo sits there at the top with a 4-1 and one record. Meanwhile, Ball State's at 3-2. and two. The winner of this one, well, their destiny will be in their hands. If Toledo wins this, they can actually write their ticket to Detroit, depending on what happens tomorrow night. So a lot to be played for tonight here in Toledo. It should be a lot of fun on this very cool, breezy evening here in the Glass Bowl. And a pleasant good evening, everybody. I'm Dave Neal. Now, usually, you know, my analyst is right here next to me. Well, Dan Mullen, former Florida Gator coach, Mississippi State Bulldog head coach, well, he wanted to be right in the middle of the action. You cannot take the coach away from the football field, so he's down the sidelines. And, Coach, this is always probably, I mean, after a week's worth of work, and in this case, 10 days' worth of work, this has to be a great time of the night. Absolutely. The team's running out of the tunnel right now. This is the time, the energy, the excitement, the juice. You can hear the team getting psyched in the locker room, juice running out on the field. You work so hard for these opportunities. You only get 12 games to play a year, and you are working as hard as you can for them. You've been around the hotel all day, the emotion building up, the excitement, the coaches, the players, everybody ready to get out there and go hit the field. There's nothing like playing football for a title in November, and we have two teams that are competing for that title out here in the glass bowl tonight. All right, now this is always the fun part right before kickoff, but the bottom line is you got to win some games, and so for both these teams, there's a couple of keys as we take a look at our Jared keys to the game. What are they for these clubs? Well, you know, it starts for Ball State with the man of steel. They, Carson Steele, they have got to get the ball in his hands, establish the run, let him go make plays. He can do it all for them, and running the ball, catching it out of the backfield. they got to rely on him. Secondly, their defense has got to tackle well in the open field. For all the athletes that Toledo has, including their quarterbacks, the running backs, receivers, they got to slow them down and tackle in the open field. For Toledo, it's play to the strength of the quarterback. Daquan Finn's going to start. We might see Gleason come in as well. But play to the strength of your quarterback, not just in the play calls, but the players around surrounding him, getting ready to go play. Second, they need to stop the run. If they can make Ball State one-dimensional and take away the running game, they're going to be in great position to take control of the MAC West. Well, Daquan Finn will get the start. The injured quarterback for Toledo is available to play, and that is good news for Rocket fans. We'll see how good it is for Ball State. It should be a good one. Mac West, a showdown coming up between the Cardinals and the Rockets right after this. Temperatures will be in the low 40s tonight with a nice little breeze here in Toledo. That's what you want on a Mac Tuesday night. Ball State coming from Muncie at 5-4, Toledo 6-3. Both these teams, ironically, have won four of their last five games on the season. Toledo won the toss. They defer, so Ball State will get the opening kick. This is a Toledo team that has been putting up some points. They lead the Mac in scoring. Defensively, they're giving up about 27 points a game. Meanwhile, Ball State needs to be more efficient on offense. They're averaging just about 25 points a game as we are underway. That one's taken out to the 25-yard line and right there. Down the sidelines tonight, hopefully she's brought her mittens with her, is Taylor Davis. <laughs> Let's check in with her right now. Hey, Taylor. Hey, Dave. Well, this one certainly has no shortage of implications, and both teams entered this one with a lot of momentum. Toledo is currently undefeated on the season right here at home at the Glass Bowl, but Ball State is fresh off ending Kent State's 12-game home win streak. As the players told me this week, there's just something different about midweek action, especially when there's so much at stake. The top two in the division, championship aspirations, and the path to that includes a win tonight. 
So our two head coaches, Jason Candle of Toledo, Mike New of Ball State, first play of the game, will lose a yard or two. The handoff off the left side to the super talented Carson Steele. We will call his name a bunch tonight. He's averaging over 25 carries a game. That was a loss of three, brought down by Deswan Johnson. Don Paddock, under center, the red shirt junior, waited his time patiently to get this starting quarterback job, and he's had a fantastic season. Out of the shotgun formation on second down and 13. He was flushed out of the pocket, and he will be wrapped up around the 22-yard line. And this is and he will lose a yard. So back-to-back -back tackles for loss for this Toledo defense. And this is not the start you want if you're Paul State. You want to be playing ahead of the chains all day long and try to avoid these third and long situations. You look at Paddock, not the tallest of dudes, six feet, 196 pounds, but he is a grinder, ultra competitive. And this is this is a type of game that he certainly has been looking for in his career after waiting his time to run the show for the Cardinals. Four man rush. Jason Jackson. So now it'll be fourth down and 14. Yeah, if you're Ball State right here, Dave, you come in, you want to establish a run, you want to get some momentum going early, not the drive that they want to start with to start the game at all. Or back to back tactics behind the line for this Toledo defense. Lucas Barrow back to punt. And a Beal to return it. He stands at the 35 yard line. He will call for a fair catch, and that is where this Toledo offense will take the football. And here comes Daquan Finn. Daquan Finn, 6'2", 210, a sophomore from just up the road in Detroit, leads this team in rushing, leads the MAC with 6.3 yards per carry, averaging 65 yards a game on the ground, 204 through the air. This guy is a difference maker. He's an electric player. He can beat you with his feet. He can beat you with his arm. He's, he missed last week's game with the injury. They're happy to have him back out here. I'm excited to watch him play, see what he can do in this offense. Of course, Tucker Gleason, the redshirt freshman out of Tampa, got the start in their last game. Ended up having a nice afternoon, 15 to 27. Led him to a come-from-behind victory over Eastern Michigan, 27-24. But tonight, it'll be Finn's show. And it's good to start him. He got there on a, on a little counter read. He read the backside defensive end, pulled the ball. But I'm telling you, getting that first contact for a guy coming off an injury is going to help build his confidence of feeling comfortable being out there on the field. They'll keep it on the ground, not much happening there. Gain of about a half a yard. Stewart brought down by Malcolm Lee. The free safety came up to the line of scrimmage to put the hit on the running back. Another third long here. Both, both teams start. You'd love to get some of those. When you talk about scripting the plays of what the coaches have ready, the plays they want to run, the formations they want to see early, you'd love to have early success and stay out of third and long early in the game. Out of the shotgun formation, Finn going to throw a little pump fake. Ooh, Ooh that one oh, almost dangerous. intercepted. One surprise, that wasn't a lineman down the field. That one almost. They were that almost hit Kendall Major, 55 in the numbers. They were setting up a double screen right there. Red, wet, red really well by Ball State. They took the swing screen to the field away. Finn came back to a receiver screen to the boundary. They read it right from the beginning. Nothing was there. But that was a really dangerous throw to even put the ball in risk right there. He's just got to burn it, say, hey, you guys won this down. We'll punt it. We'll play again later. That was a little bit dangerous. Batsky to punt it away. Coming after him. Fair catch called for and taken at the 37-yard line by Jay Sean Jackson. That'll get us to our first timeout. Both teams have punted away. We'll see if somebody can get a first down when we come back. Back in Toledo. It is a cold night, a battle for the Mac West lead at this point. 
Both teams have had one possession. Both teams have punted it away one time. You see the here at series history since Ball State joined the MAC. They have played every year, 48th meeting overall. Ball State has won two of the last three, including right here in the glass bowl a couple of years ago. But Toledo won last year in Muncie, 22 to 12. And you see this bunch set. This is a lot of fun stuff they do with Brady Hunt and Ken Arcozio, the two tight ends. They'll play a lot of different formations in 12 personnel, but show you 11 looks. There is Carson Steele, the sophomore running back. He is fourth in the FBS and rushing, leads the Mac in that department, picks up four there, and a positive game for Ball State. And that's what they can do with the counter play, with the, the tight the leading around, the tight ends leading around. But when you have two tight ends that you can move out, for example, see Tanner Kozeel down by himself, isolated a tight end down by himself to the bottom of the screen. Going up top, coming near side. Is that a catch? They're going to say gonna that's say a reception. Koziel with the catch, one-handed. Nate Bauer was back there in coverage, but if that play sticks, that's one heck of a catch. Yeah, oh, they're already stopped it. They're, I was going to say they're going to get up and try to snap this one in a hurry. I don't think he got play that was one. A completed pass. The play is under further review. Nope. Okay. After discussion, the, the pass was incomplete. It's third it's down. That's some great replay work right there to keep the tempo of the game going. They saw that and just moved on. But that's what we're saying, Dave. When you look at the tight ends and what they're able to do by staying in 12 personnel but showing you wide, uh, different looks out of it, and they put Koziel out one-on-one -on -one by himself with his size matchup to try to utilize the matchups those guys have as tight ends and receivers in the pass game. Koziel, a former high school wide receiver, they will split him off the line of scrimmage. Brady Hunt, the other tied in, a former high school quarterback. He's a redshirt freshman. That's the combination with a running back tight end. That ball's batted in the air, and it falls to the turf. And it'll be fourth down, trying to hit Jason Jackson again. Jason with 64 catches coming into the season. He has been the main target for John Paddock. And if you look here, Paddock the other way, I thought they are going to work into the boundary right here. Right When you look at this matchup, one of the things Carson Steele, we talked about trying to utilize him and the tight end matchup down the bottom. They had two on two there, and I really think Paddock should have worked that two on two matchup instead of the combo combination coverage to the field. Barrow will punt it away. Beal back to return. He'll let this one bounce into the end zone. And that one will come out to the 20 yard line. Well, we've got a fantastic one coming your way this Saturday on ABC. Big 12 ABC Saturday night football game presented by Capital One. It's the undefeated and now fourth ranked Horned Frogs in their balance attack as they head to off to take on B. John Robinson and the number 18 Longhorns. Coverage begins at 7.30 Eastern. It's also available on the ESPN app. Bijan Robinson leading the Big 12, 125 yards a game on the ground. Miller over at TCU, second in the Big 12 with 112 yards a game on the ground. That should be a fantastic game on Saturday night. Benny Boone with the carry. He's out over the 25 and will fall forward out to the 26-yard line. Actually, make it the 27, gain of seven. And you'll see the rotating a lot of running backs into the game here. But I like this early in the game, right? With the Quan Finn coming off the injury, let's get established the run game, take some pressure off them with the running backs. Two tight ends in the game for Toledo. On second down, they'll run it again. They'll go with Boone. He runs right into a wall of white jerseys, maybe a yard. Great stout defense right there. And the reason they're going this two tight end set early in the game, we talk about as coaches script plays, that they want to see what the adjustment, how Ball State's going to play the two tight end situation and how they're going to sub. Ball State's a substitution defense. So they're going to match personnel with personnel. If you put big guys in the game, they're going to go big. If you put fast guys in the game, they're going to get into a nickel defense and go small. So third down. Stewart in the game at running back. They'll fake it there. Finn coming this way and throw it to Stewart. He makes the catch out over the 30. That'll be a first down as he's run out of bounds at the 33-yard line. That'll be a pickup of five. 
Good confidence builder there on the play action on third and short. Easy throw into the flat, pick it up. And now it allows him that first down, allows him to get into a tempo mode on offense. Going quick, three-man rush, going up top. Looking for Newton, and that one is incomplete, but a flag will come in, a couple of flags. Make it three flags. A.J. Uzadima back there in coverage for Ball State. All, all. <laughs> A.J. Pass interference, defense number three. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. Well, and A.J.'s their top cover corner. And he looked like he was in good position at first. And they, they Jerron Newton coming back to the ball really drew the pass interference penalty at the very end. So first down from the 48-yard line. Keep it on the ground with Stewart. Stewart, the ball carrier. Got back to the line of scrimmage. Brought down by Cole Pierce. Pierce on the year with 73 tackles. He and Clayton Call, the two linebackers, two inside guys, they have combined for almost 160 tackles on the year between the two of them. And, and you see that, a great fit on the counterplay, the patience to fit in behind the D lineman and, and, behind, and fit off the pullers to make that tackle. Here's Finn. Boy, has a man, lofts it up in the air, trying to go down that far side and under through. But there is another flag that come in, comes in late. Trying to hit Blankemsey down that far sideline. Jordan Riley back there in coverage. An eligible player downfield, offense number 71, pass interference, defense number 18, penalties offset, repeat, first down. And there's a great job here on this wheel route. He runs the out and up, if you look at this right now, off the play action, they create the matchup on the safety. Play action. Get Finn on the outside, and the out and up, the safety steps up, and if Finn just can get that out in front, he has a touchdown. A little bit underthrown, but again, draws the pass interference count. Finn will throw pump fakes. Now a little shoulder fake. Now a little two-step, and then underneath. Pass is caught, then dropped, and recovered by Newton. They're going to say, are they going to say this is complete or incomplete? I think they're going to discuss this. I, I don't know if he ever had possession of this ball right here. But the athleticism of Finn is what makes these plays able to stay alive in the pocket. Ooh. Ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. Third down. What'd you think? You know, I, I, I on, on the angle that you saw right there, no, I think that's a catch. I do too. I think that's a catch. He was able to put both hands on it, possess it, make and, a football and make, a, make a move. Yeah. It, it, it looked like it looked like he had that secured. They're going to take a look at this. Yes. The play is under further review. Two steps in, and that, ooh. <laughs> Buzadima came in there and kind of poked that away. Big decision coming up. We'll step aside back to Toledo after this. ESPN College Football is presented by Ram Trucks, built to serve. And in part by Target. Shop exclusive Black Panther Wakanda Forever at Target. Ball State's last MAC championship was in that shortened 2020 season. Meanwhile, you got to go back to 2017 for Toledo's last MAC championship. Well, while we were away, they determined that this was a catch, and so good news for Toledo fans. But uh, you're right, Coach. It, it did look like he made a move after 
it was an extra set. steps, but he was able to move his body, secure it, and then fall on the ball after the catch. And then he recovered his own fumble. That was smart. So makes it a 15-yard pickup, and first down and 10 inside Ball State territory at the 37-yard line. And this is where you like to take a shot sometimes. It needs to get a first and 10 here, get a shot play dialed up, get down the field. They're looking that way. Finn going toward the end zone. That one is incomplete. He was trying to hit Blankensy. A little miscommunication. I think you saw Jamal Turner there, break, number nine. He broke off his route, maybe thinking that, that Finn was going to start scrambling. Let's see him. He wheels up the sidelines and almost almost gets in the way to make the play uh, in front of uh, Blankensy right there. So second down and 10. Then two of five throwing the football to start this game. He'll keep it on the ground. Tripped up there by Sydney Houston. <laughs> Try to go tempo on third down and not let Ball State, State substitute with you. Fan boy saw a hole in that line, tucked the football and drives his way down to the 25 yard line. They say the football came out of Ball State does, but the whistles had blown. That'll be a gain of five and a first down. Yeah, I think this was a designed to quarterback draw right there on third short. That's one of the things that Finn does. He's one of the best running quarterbacks in all of college football. Finn completes passes at a clip of 60%, 18 touchdowns. The one knock, perhaps, the nine interceptions. He's rushed for 520 yards on the year. Gonna throw here, a quick one to the outside. That pass is caught there by Jawan Newton. His 31st catch of the year. Nick Jones back there in coverage. Balance at wide receiver for this Toledo team. Newton with 31 catches. Maddox has 26 catches. Barkley with 15 receptions. Stewart brought down there by Woodard. It'll be third down coming up. The big third down play here in the red zone. And let's see, in the other third shorts, they've tried to go with some play action, get Finn out on the edge, give him some, some opportunities to run or throw out in the perimeter. Off the right side. Stewart breaks a couple of tackles. He'll have the first down inside the 10 yard line as he picks up 10. Amos able to drag him down, but it will be first and goal for the Rockets. Again, it's a, it's a little counter read pulling the center and the guard around. Great job by Stewart, keeping his balance, getting the first down. to throw to the end zone, and pass is caught. Touchdown, Toledo. Jerwan Newton with his eighth touchdown catch of the year as he just does scoot it in inside that pile on. That was another run pass option right here. And he saw he had to look one-on-one -on -one matchup into the boundary. And you see Finn really hasn't missed a step. The timing on the back shoulder throw against press man, the comfort he has with these wide receivers, fantastic. His 19th touchdown pass of the year for Daquan Finn. 12 plays, 80 yards, just under five minutes off the clock. Toledo strikes first in this big Mac West showdown. Great drive right there by Toledo, getting Daquan Finn back into the flow of the game. Did a good job right here, moving the pocket, getting them out of the pocket on play action passes. 
on RPOs in the drop back game. He's able to stay alive, complete a ball down the middle of the field. RPO back shoulder throw for the touchdown. They were three for three on third down on that drive. And you see, get your quarterback back in. That's your playmaker. Get everybody in sync. They're an explosive offense. They're the highest scoring offense in the MAC, and they want to get it rolling here early. Yeah, they average 36 points a game. That is uh, 25th in the country. You said leads the MAC. 400 yards of offense per game. Zadima brought down around the 17 yard line. So that's where Ball State will take over. So now you've had a couple possessions if you're Ball State. What have you learned as an offensive coordinator? Have you learned, have you seen enough to learn anything? Yeah, you, you know, not as much. You're not in your rhythm right now of what you want to do and how you want to establish it. This is an important drive. There's no panic. There's no worry of what you're doing. But you still have not established the run. Your, your, your strength is run and then get some play action throws off the ability to run. And you got to stick with it. And you really got to see, we've got to get, get Steele involved here some way or another. Pass to the outside. This complete there, another one to the tight end. Those guys have been really racking up some catches lately between Hunt and Koziel. These last, their last game, they had 11 receptions in the game, but a flag is down. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense number one. 15-yard penalty added to the end of the run, automatic first down. And that's that's what that's the type of break you need in Toledo. Those are the mistakes you can't make. Those are mistakes they've cleaned up this year, from cleaned up the penalties from being a team that was heavily penalized in the past. And you can't have these. You got momentum going. You have good things happening. I don't think we see it off the screen right there. But those are mistakes you can't give Ball State the easy first downs like that. The senior out of Detroit with that penalty. We'll move the football out over the 40-yard line. That handoff goes to Carson Steele. He'll bounce forward for a couple of yards. Boy, he has been great at breaking through some tackles, picking up some extra yardage. He is just, uh, you want to talk about just an ultra-competitive individual you're looking at. <laughs> But you see Toledo really loading up the line of scrimmage. And, and, and Zachary Ford right there, his size allows him to not have to substitute. He's got the size to play when they have tight ends in the game and the speed to play against receivers. Little end around. This one going to Jayshon Jackson. And he'll be out of bounds in time for the first down around the 45-yard line. A gain of 11. And with so much attention on Carson Steele right here, they look to him, all eyes are kind of on him. Do a great job on the reverse, coming around off the inside zone to the outside. This is the type of drive Ball State needs this just to create momentum for their offense. Jackson goes in motion again, high snap. Fielded there by Paddock, and he is brought down on the other side of the 50. That'll be a big loss for the Cardinals. And we saw this last week early in the game for them. There's some of the mistakes that they've made, and they've hurt themselves. Talking to the coaches, they said one of the keys to the game is for us to just be consistent. Get rid of some mistakes that put us behind the chains with turnovers and fumbles and mistakes that we cause on our own. Loss of six, make it second down and 16. Going back the other way, they hit Steele with it. Well played by Toledo. A big collision on the back end by Max and Hook. They set up the script, pump the screen one way, come back the other. But what a great open field tackle right there. Running through the tackle, not breaking down. Gets in position, comes to balance, gets his head up. Drops the shoulder and runs through the tackle. Coming off a career high 13 stops in their last game. Matter of fact, he's had back to back games with double figure tackles. Third down. They'll go underneath, and that one is caught, but no gain on the play. And that's, that's the situation that Ball State, they want to stay out of these third and long situations right here. Now, 
Obviously, they hurt themselves on this drive to slow it down, but that's the type of drive that can build some momentum. They've, they've got some confidence. They got a couple of first downs, move the chains, and they needed that just to settle themselves down offensively. The Ball State will punt this one away. Lucas Barrow. This one will bounce inside the 10 and be down to around the 7-yard line. So Toledo is backed up their last drive, went 80 yards in 12 plays, a little under five minutes for their opening score. You look at the glass bowl. Well, the ninth annual Armed Forces Classic is happening Friday on Veterans Day. Michigan State number two, Gonzaga, square off on the flight deck of the USS Abraham Lincoln in San Diego. Coverage will begin at 6.30 Eastern time, 3.30 Pacific on ESPN and the app. This game is just part of our salute to the veterans that's happening all week. That's going to be pretty cool to play a game on an aircraft carrier like that. A chance to watch some Kentucky last night. Pretty impressive group of hoopsters over in Lexington this year. Any boon on that carry? Let's go down to Taylor. Yeah, guys, that last scoring drive definitely seemed to provide some confidence confidence for Daquan Finn. Obviously, we've talked about the shoulder injury that kept him out of the game last week, but something to keep an eye on. He actually just spent some time in the medical tent getting that right ankle taped. Head coach Jason Candle was in there with him, talking to him about how he felt, how comfortable he was. Obviously, this a guy this is a guy who's effective with his legs, so something to pay attention to. Finn will throw here, going way up top, showing you. His arm strength, but overthrew Newt. Nick Jones running step for step with Newt. You'll see a lot of this. They're going to be able to create some matchups. A lot of quarters coverage by Ball State. And what it is is that, you know, when your quarters coverage is four across on the back end. But what they did is they got the safety to freeze his feet on the inside receiver, and that leaves the corner one on one up over the top. But really good coverage uh, by Nick Jones right there at Ball State. On their last scoring drive, Toledo was three out of three on third down conversions. They're looking at third down and five here. Then will throw, high throw, and that one, a dangerous deflection. Trying to hit Liddy Cool and off his hands. It'll be fourth down, and Toledo will punt it away. Great three and out. Great job by the Ball State defense getting off the field. Their offense flipped field position. They have the opportunity right now with, with Toledo kicking into the wind to get some great field position here for their offense. Batsky to punt it away. Going to take a favorable Toledo bounce out to midfield. Wind, wind knocked, you saw the wind knock. It's a little windier than it, than it even looks out there on the field. That ball's getting knocked down going in that direction. Yeah, the wind has been pretty brisk all afternoon. Temperatures in the low 40s tonight. Wouldn't expect anything less here in Toledo. And, and, and match Denver, right, right there, right there. You, <laughs> get, you got your, your Tuesday night, Wednesday night matching right here. This is football weather up here in Ohio. So Ball State now with a relatively short field to work with. Again, it's how aggressive Toledo's defense has been. Let's see if they take a shot here on first down. Try to create an explosive play right off the bat on play action. Paddock two out of five for just five yards. And it off to Steele. He's finding it hard to find any space in there between the tackles. Very aggressive. The, the Toledo front, very good defensive front, experienced front playmakers up there. Boy, Steele's. Already up over 1,000 yards this year. Came into this one with 1,082 yards on the season. Had a quick throw, and that one is incomplete. There are no flags on the play. Trying to hit Amir Abdul Rahman, the Vanderbilt transfer. And Quinion Mitchell with a great break on the ball. Great quickness. Making the play on the, on breaking up the slam. Third down and seven coming up for Ball State. They're 0 for 3 on third downs. 
The Toledo the pressure. bringing some heat. That one is incomplete. Pressure came from Deswan Johnson. And a great job. They're, they're twisting the, the, the looks up inside. You see the twist coming. And Deswan Johnson's able to get clean up there, get the ball out a little bit earlier than they wanted to, but great coverage on the back end by Quinion Mitchell again. Boy, Ball State just can't get any momentum offensively. Lucas Borrow out to punt again, but some flags come in. It's fourth and seven, so an offsides won't give you the first down, but it certainly but make you think about it. It'll make it, you right? think of it. It's going to make <laughs> you think. Defense, number 11, five yard penalty, fourth down. I in this situation right here, I think they're going to go for it. They put the offense back out on the field. You have you have one of the top running backs in the country, the leading rusher in the MAC, a 220-pound guy. You're going to get down to about fourth and two. You puts a lot of things on the playbook. Steel averages about five yards per carry. I like this. You're you're here. You're playing for. You know, you're on the road. This is a championship, a game that's going to put whoever's going to be in first place in the Mac West. Great opportunity to show your team you're here to win. They'll put Jackson in motion. They'll fake it to steal and throw on fourth and two. A flag is out. Is that Quinion Mitchell on the interception? There is a flag back at the 40-yard line. Mitchell slow to get up. That was a heck of a grab by Mitchell in traffic. Offside. Defense, number 85. Five-yard penalty results in a first down. Wow. That is a huge mistake. My goodness. Back-to-back -back offsides penalty. And Paddock, had, you know, he had him early. was a little bit late with the throw. Great job, and they respect they're looking at Steele to run it. He, he has his tight end open on the wheel route. He's a little late with the throw. Quinion Mitchell able to intercept it, but it gets called off with the offsides penalty. He'll run Steele off the left side. He'll get it inside the 35 down to the 33-yard line. Zachary Ford comes up to make the stop already. Four tackles for Ford. Boy, Steele has been some sort of fine for this Ball State offense. Had an offer from Purdue, but declined it. They really wanted to make him like a linebacker, but he was like, no, I'm going to like to be a running back. And Ball State was on him early. That's how we ended up here. Now they're going that direction. Again, another flag comes in in the middle of the field. They were trying to hit Koziel there, the tight end. Well, it's been a sloppy one tonight. Yeah. yeah. Holding defense number two. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. And, and that's the third first down that the Toledo defense has given up uh, on penalties. And that's something and we, we talk about Toledo defense. One of the big things for them that they wanted to get cleaned up. You see him tackling the tight end going down there. <laughs> That'll get a flag. Uh, most times. But they wanted to clean up the penalties, and they've given three first downs off the of penalties already in the first quarter. Here's Steele. He turns the corner. He's to the 10, and a big collision there. It'll be first and goal for Ball State. The best run of the night so far for Steele. He picks up 15. You see the burst he has for a guy that's 220 pounds. That burst of speed when he got around the edge turns the corner and gets vertical in a hurry. And then he's always looking for some contact. So is Max and Hook, and that's why they just hooked up right there. <laughs> 30 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Ball State with their best drive of the game. Of course, helped by Toledo. They'll toss it to Steele. Stutter steps through the middle. He's down to the two, and is he in the end zone? Touchdown, Ball State.
They run this toss, but it's an inside zone toss. He let him get the ball deep in the backfield, his shoulder square to the line of scrimmage. And at 220 pounds, he has the power to go run over any DB when they meet at the goal line. That is his 10th rushing touchdown of the year. I take a look at this. Well, his head clearly got across the line, <laughs> but that's not what counts. Ooh, that's, that, that looks close. But I tell you, watch his feet right here in the hole. And for a guy of his size at 220 pounds, he leads the nation in tackles miss created. Creating miss tackles? There it is. Creating miss yeah, tackles. That's, that's good. I, that's I, I knew proper. what you meant. I knew what you I, meant. 66. Everyone out there knows what I mean. But 66 of those. Yeah. And you think of a guy that's his size and his build. He's just going to be a power runner. But he has the feet and the quickness. He makes you miss. Not much on that look that we're going to do to turn uh, overturn anything. And let's see right down the line. Kind of hard to see the ball that where exactly the ball is right there. Is there indisputable video? There we go. Let's find out. After review, the ruling on the field of a touchdown stands. So nothing conclusive, and we'll give them the six. <laughs> So they agreed with us on the call, right? <laughs> Absolutely. They should always agree with us. Yeah. Well, that's the first drive where we saw Carson Steele kind of do what he does. A couple of big runs that set up that touchdown. And Toledo helped him along the way. The point after is up and good. Six plays, 52 yards, 216 off. The clock, and Carson Steele now with seven carries for 35 yards, and that touchdown. That ties it up at seven with 20 seconds to go here in the first quarter. And that's the drive. That's what Ball State, that's they came into the game. They want to establish Steele and control the tempo of the game, this explosive, high-scoring offense of Toledo. But they're built on power running, and that's what they wanted to do. And they got behind him, gave him the ball, and he carried it into the end zone for him. Well, I mean, when you start talking about Carson Steele, does he not look like a guy that would own an alligator? <laughs> Crocky J. <Jay. laughs> and I loved it. He, he, he called him Crocky J, and then he realized it like afterwards. He wasn't sure when he was young that it was an alligator, but at that point he'd already named him. And, and he said he's up to four, over four-foot alligator he has right now at home as a pet. There it is. There he is. Uh, it, it came. It, they shipped it to him, apparently. Yeah. And he doesn't have the mouth taped up right there either. That's <laughs> <laughs> but he looks like he could wrestle an alligator right there, even when he was young. Oh. Short kick taken at the 10-yard line. Stewart finally dropped right at the 20. He'll spot his forward progress to the 23-yard line. And this is what the Ball State's offense is built on. Get it? It all goes starts with Carson Steele. His physicality is to be able to run between the tackles and physical. But then for a guy his size, he has the speed to get to the outside and turn the corner. You get down to the goal line, he can make you miss. Makes guys miss in the backfield. Shakes off tacklers and runs over the final tackler into the end zone. That's why he's one of the top running backs in America right now and over 1,000 yards rushing on the season already. Not to mention he squats 615 pounds, benches 400 pounds, and has 7% body fat. A lot of the numbers that you and I possess. Very, very similar. I was in the gym today. Those, that, if people <laughs> saw our workout, that's very similar. Was, boy, those, those guys are lean, strong guys. <laughs> uh, <laughs> lean is not a word that's usually used. <laughs> <when people describe. laughs> That will do it for the first quarter. We are tied at seven. A lot on the line for Toledo and Ball State. Could this one lead to a berth in Detroit for the MAC championship game? Only time will tell. Back to Toledo. And welcome back to ESPN College Football presented by Ram Trucks. We are tied at seven after one quarter of play on this Tuesday night primetime.
Mac West Showdown. Toledo comes in with a four and one record in Mac play. Meanwhile, this Ball State team, they are sitting there one game behind at three and two in conference play. And if Toledo wins tonight, they could actually clinch a berth in Detroit tomorrow night. Depends on what happens in other Mac games around. Now, if Ball State wins this one, they certainly control their own destiny. If they can win out, they would play for the MAC championship. Both these teams, if you're in November and you're in control of your own destiny, is where you want to be. This MAC race, both in the East and the West, is one of the most exciting in college football. So it's great to have college football every night. And you got great games tomorrow night. Next week, deciding this MAC race is going to be exciting down the stretch. Running to the right side, nothing there for Stewart. It's Ben right at the line of scrimmage. Great job by, by great job by Clayton Call right there. The physicality, I'm impressed with these linebackers at Ball State. Watch, watch Clayton Call stay behind the ball. That's key, you don't want to overrun the runner. You want to stay with him, stay slightly behind the ball. And as you see that seam that he's going to cut up into, you fill it in a hurry, no hesitation. Gets the tackle for loss and forces the punt and keeps the momentum with Ball State right now. Call last year had a career high 14 stops against this Toledo team. That one will hit at the 38 and spin toward the sideline. Well, we have a That's fantastic Bucky's women's down. basketball game for you on the Friday Bucky's night. Leah Boston and the defending national champs are ranked number one. They'll take on Diamond Miller and 17th ranked Maryland in College Park. That should be a good one. South Carolina and Maryland coming your way at 6 o'clock Eastern on ESPN2 and, of course, the ESPN app. Leah Boston, that's unfair for everybody else in women's college <laughs> basketball. She is something else. Well, this is right where Ball State wants to be. In this game where they have the patience to let Carson Steele keep pounding away at you. Both tight ends will shift to the near side on a first down and 10. They'll hand it off to Steele, waits for a little seam, and he'll get it to the 40. And it's pushed back there. The defensive work up front led by Nate Gibhan. Just a little inside zone, creating the double teams, but really good job. Right there in the fun by Givon of, of getting up. He was he had the one-on-one -on -one block. He had to defeat the block, got off it, and made the tackle. They'll swing it to Steele. He is met as he turns up the field. Well played on the outside by Zachary Ford, who just picked up his fifth tackle and a loss of two yards. And he's everywhere tonight. That's the thing that Zach Ford does. When you're playing against a team like Ball State that plays with multiple tight ends, when you have a guy at his size, he can defeat the block of tight ends, play in space. He's their nickelback, but he gives them flexibility within that defense to just stay in that personnel because he can play physical in the box and can play in the pass game. Paddock to throw, slings it to the far side, and there is no flag on the play. They were trying to hit Koziel there on the far side. So now it'll be fourth down, and Ball State will have to punt it away again. They're letting them play a little bit out there on the outside, letting them be a little bit physical with each other on both sides of the ball. Paddock, three of nine for three yards through the air. Adam Beal back to return this punt. Lucas Barrow has been a busy man for Ball State. This will be his fourth punt. Line drive kick that's certainly returnable by Beal. He will come near side. And still on his feet, trying to find a little room to run. Finally wrapped up around the 30-yard line, so that's where Toledo will take over. A flag is down, however. No? No, I don't see. Oh. Yeah, it is over there on the far side. There it is on the 25-yard line on the very Holding. far side of the field. Return team number 20. 10-yard penalty from the end of the kick. First down, timeout. So that'll back up Toledo an extra 10 yards. 
on a holding call. So we'll step aside, 12-18 to go before halftime. We are tied at seven at the Glass Bowl in Toledo. Tied at seven here at Toledo between Ball State and the Rockets. We weren't sure if Daquan Finn, the starting quarterback for Toledo, was going to go till right before kickoff, but he has suited up and played quite well. For more on what's going on with him from the Ball State side of things, let's go down to Taylor. Yeah, Dave, down here on the Ball State sideline, the defense very communicative about keeping Daquan Finn in the pocket. This is a guy who actually had a 60-yard run on a third down in this matchup last year that ultimately led to the win. That play, as well as his athletic ability, has been a point of conversation leading up to this game this week, as well as over here on the sideline tonight. They want to make him one-dimensional. Well, they kept him in the pocket there, and, and the pass Taylor, was batted down. Yeah, Taylor, they've done a great job of that all night tonight right now, of keeping him in there, forcing him to beat him, beat them with his arm from the pocket. Second down and 10. And it off right side. That one going to Stewart. Not much there, maybe a yard. These linebackers are filling in a hurry right there. Cole Pierce came in with 73 tackles. Clay Call with 78. Two middle backers have been the ones who led the charge. Pierce, the former walk-on, wearing number 40. Finn coming this side over throws his intended target. Ruan New covered by Nick Jones. And a quick punting situation now for Toledo. And he had, he, they had man-to-man -man coverage right there. So when you have man-to-man -man coverage, you're looking for your best one-on -one matchup, one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, and, and he went out there to it, to Newton. But you just see the ball really sail on him out of bounds. And you wonder if coming off that injury, not being able to throw for a while, a little out of sync right now with his accuracy. Fair catch call for a short field for Ball State. They'll have it at the 47-yard line. We're tied at seven. Stepping aside for a moment. Back to Toledo right after this. We are tied at seven here at the glass bowl between Toledo and Ball State. And Toledo has really stepped up defensively. And you talked about being sure-handed tackling. Um, Toledo, Toledo has done that here tonight. Yeah, their defense is flying around, and it's it's led by Zach Ford. They're great athlete. They can move all over the place right there. They're getting hats to the football. When you're playing Carson Seal, you got to bring every all the hats to the football. Two tackles for loss, a sack already. You see the physical play, great technique, fundamentals, attacking the football. Been a little bit more of a defensive battle than maybe we thought coming into this game was the explosiveness of these offenses, but it's really the defenses of both teams are shining through. There's a look at Judge Cole Pepper, the transfer from Penn State. Comes from that football family, of course, his father. Brad Cole Pepper was an All-American and played in the NFL for a decade. The gang tackling again. 33 steal the ball. Cole Pepper right in the middle of it right now. He's a big guy out of Tampa, Florida. His dad was known to make a tackle or two at the University of Florida. as part of that 91 SEC championship team before going on to the NFL. Now he's a trial lawyer in the Tampa area. Oh, yeah. And Doesn't look the same. He lost about 100 pounds since he got out of playing football. <laughs> Here's Steele through the left side, and he'll be inside the 40, down to the 38-yard line. Gant and Johnson converge to make the tackle. Gain of eight. You see him trying some different formations here, putting the three receivers out to the field, trying to spread out the defense, trying to find what formation they're going to have the most success running the football in and trying some different formations, spreading out the defense, shifting. You see this? They get in this group set, and they shift out of it to see if they can gain a, a numbers advantage in the run game. Going to the trips, the same formation they went to the other last play, just the other side. Ooh, bobbled snap. They get it to Steele. 
breaks a couple of tackles. It's a foot race to the end zone, and Steele will break the tape. Touchdown, Ball State. Touchdown to Ball State. 38 yards. What a dynamic run right there. They block. Toledo brought the run blitz on third and one, and Steele saw, saw it, was able to cut all the way back and make someone miss. You see the run blitz from the backers coming off the one side? Right there, Zach Ford's had such a big night, but wasn't able to wrap him up. And that's the power, the strength of Steele to break that tackle. When he gets in the open field, he's got speed. That was Ball State's first third down conversion of the game, and it goes 38 yards for a touchdown, and that's what Steele does. They just they just keep handing him the football. He averages about 25 carries a game. He'll just wear you down, and if you're not sure-handed tackling, he will do this to you. He is some kind of special athlete. Ball State has the lead. Ball State's taking a touchdown lead over Toledo. 14 to seven. Steele now with 85 yards on 11 carries tonight, including a couple of touchdowns. That drive, 47 yards, capped off by that 38 yard touchdown run by Steele, who by the way now is 1167 yards this season. That is now ninth single season history for Ball State. A lot of football left for Carson Steele. Fair catch called for the 10 yard line. It'll come out to the 25 for more on Mr. Steele. Let's go down to Taylor. Yeah, guys, I had a great conversation with him this week, of course, about Crocky J. But I also <laughs> asked him what stat is most important to him, and he said exactly what we just saw in that touchdown run, missed tackles. This guy actually has the most missed tackles forced on runs in all of college football. Heading into tonight, he had 66. He said, that's been my important focus this year. He said, turning two yards into 10, making guys miss. That's really been the point of emphasis. And he said a lot of it comes in the weight room, but also study two guys at the next level in particular, Derrick Henry and Christian McCaffrey. Coach, you said yourself that was uh, Derrick Henry S. It was right there, that his ability to make you miss at the first level, but then run through a tackler, just run right through a tackler to get in, and then the speed to get in the end zone. It's a nice combination of Derrick Henry and Christian McCaffrey. Yeah, we'll get you some fantasy points, those guys. <laughs> Skills getting that done tonight, that's for sure. Here is Finn trying to throw on the run, and the pass is caught. Are they going to say, yes, it's a reception? They will spot it at the 48-yard line. That'll be a first down. Riley on the coverage of Maddox. That'll pick up 20. And that's a good way to get Finn going again, is get him out of the pocket, get him using his athleticism, and get on the edge and make these throws in the open field. They'll go handoff to the inside. Not much there as Micah Kelly gets stuffed after a gain of about a yard, maybe two. Ball State front's doing a great job inside of taking away any inside running for Toledo so far. That D-line, the most experienced group up front for Ball State. Matter of fact, this defense has gotten better as the season's gone on. The first five games, they allowed over 33 points a game. The last four, they're giving up just 19. Trying to defend the goal line here. They can't stop it. Touchdown, Toledo. Devin Maddox, 48 yards. Jordan Riley was hanging on, but couldn't stop Maddox. You see, again, we, we got Daquan Finn out on the perimeter a little bit. Let him move. Get him out of the pocket a little bit and get one-on-one -on -one shots down the field. I think he's a little more comfortable right now getting out of the pocket and using his feet. Point after is up and good. And just like that, Toledo answers the bell, and they tie it up at 14 with 8.51 to go here in the second quarter. Maddox's third touchdown catch of the year. And if we look right here, 
Adam, right now, the ability to get Daquan Finn out of the pocket, and you see the corners coverage. He's got two one-on-one -on -one matchups there, and he's able to get the matchup one-on-one -on, -one on the safety on the inside receiver, and Devin Max goes up and is able to make the play. Hey, if you go up and you give your receivers a chance to make plays, especially one-on-one -on, -one on a safety, Devin Maddox rewards him for giving him that opportunity. He high points the ball, makes a great catch, able to get into the end zone. And I think we had talked about Ball State was wanting to keep Daquan Finn in the pocket. You saw the two plays on that drive. They got him out of the pocket with a little guard pull play action. And he looks a little bit more comfortable getting out of that pocket and making plays and throws out of the pocket on the run. Two touchdown passes tonight for Daquan Finn. Gives him 20 on the year. And a fair catch taken there. So the ball come out to the 25-yard line. Well, here's our Big 12 ABC Saturday night football game presented by Capital One. It's a good one. The newly fourth-ranked TCU Horn Frogs and their balanced attack will head to Austin to take on Bijan Robinson and the number 18 Longhorns. Coverage begins at 7.30 Eastern time. 4.30 Pacific. It's also available, of course, on the ESPN app. TCU averaging about 43 points a game. Now, Texas defense not shabby. They're giving up right around 21 a game. But that should be a lot of fun in Austin. That Big 12 is going to come right down to the end, I think. Paddock, he's going up top. Catch is made at midfield and a great grab. Right in front of Max and Hook. Brady Hunt, the tight end. Comes down with a football, a gain of 25. Hunt it. Oh, now they're going to say incomplete pass. Bring it back. Looks like he had it here. Let's, let's look at this angle right here. When he hits the ground, I think it pops out when he hits the ground. A oh, great job right there by the DB. Great job by Max and Hook right there, getting his hand in and finishing the play all the way to the ground and knocking it loose at the end. Mike New just shakes his head on that one. Brady Hunt almost pulled in a remarkable catch. Instead, it'll be second down and 10. Steal your single setback. Off the right side. And he's out to the 29-yard line. So it'll be third down and six. But he's a, he's a positive runner, too. He finishes runs. And that's one thing you want to see at the back of his size. His contact's made, but he's every run, he's finishing going forward and falling forward at the end of the play. They run the counter play, but as contact's made, it's not even there. He's getting the extra yard after contract, always falling forward. Paddock. Throws incomplete. It'll be fourth down. Boy, he really does try to attack the tight ends. Paddock does. He, he's been looking for Brady Hunt, Cozyel, all night long. They're trying to create that matchup, but Zach Ford's a guy that's a, you know, they they look and say we got our, our size, our tight end on nickel, but Zach Ford at six foot three has the size to match up with those big tight ends in man coverage. Morrow back to punt. Beal make a fair catch at the 35-yard line. Well, this season, Allstate will celebrate every field goal and extra point made by participating universities by making a donation to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. The way this is going. Field goal might determine the it, outcome. It could be. It's just the inconsistencies. You see, as the, as the offense are getting the flow, they're having great drives. But they're, the three and outs are, again, they're not getting into that flow, that first round. They need to create some drive starts. Let's see. Toledo needs a great positive play on the first play of the drive. And it off left side. Mike Kelly will get it out to the 40-yard line. Five-yard pickup for Toledo. Toledo's racked up 156 yards of offense. Ball State sitting at 106. But just 12 passing yards for Ball State. Yeah, they, just, they, have, they, they haven't been able to get guys open. Four-man look from Ball State. Fent going up top, has a man, passes caught there around the 30-yard line. They're going to say the 
It is a reception. Turner comes up with the catch in stride for a 30-yard pickup. Jamal Turner's an athletic tight end and creates mismatch problems. They're trying to get on the ball and go in a hurry right here. Out of that pistol formation, a handoff to Kelly. And a flag comes in toward the end of that play, right at the line of scrimmage. Tom Stapleton, our referee, has been a busy man tonight. Chop off. Offense, number 61 and 70. 15 yard penalty, first down. Well, first, let's go back to that nice catch by Jamal Turner down the far side. And if you, if you look here at the tight end, they do a great job in this. The two DBs get taught, caught up on the crossing route, and they're able to get Jamal Turner on the wheel route down the sidelines, and he's a really athletic tight end, able to get down the field, and again on the play action. Daquan Finn looks a lot more comfortable right now in the play action game than he does in the pure drop back. So that'll make it first down at 25. Finn to throw. That one's over the top and out of bounds. And, and this is what Toledo's just hurting themselves with penalties. The explosive plays and getting behind the chains. A lot of great calls on what do you like on second and 25. You look at this and what they've done. One of the things they've cleaned up this year is penalties and they've been really proud on it. But a lot of penalties tonight are hurting their drives. That pass is caught. Inside the 40 goes complete. Turner, the tight end. That'll be at the 38-yard line, but you're still a long way from the line to game, which is all the way down at the 20. But let's see right here. A lot of times right now you're looking, you have two plays. You want to get part of it right here. You know, it, 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 there's a lot of crickets on the headphones. Hey, what do you what is everybody like on third and 17? <laughs> right. Like crickets on the headsets right now. Who's got a good third and 17 call? But right now, what you're looking to do is get half of it back and put yourself, you have the wind at your back either for field goal range or to put yourself in a fourth and makeable situation. Finn trying to set up a little screen. They get it near side. Turner, the tight end, will get it inside the 30, down to the 29-yard line. So now you're looking at fourth down and about nine. Interesting little play there, sneaking Turner across the formation. But that's what I said, now you have the wind at your back. You get part of the yards, you get positive yards, and you give the opportunity for your field goal kicker to come in and have a shot at making it right here. Thomas Clucky got hurt in their last game against Eastern Michigan, but he is healthy now back on the field. This will be a 47-yarder, as long as 45 against Central Michigan. 10 out of 12 on the year. The kick is on the way, and he hammers it, and it is no good. Had the distance, had the wind at the back. Nothing on the board for Toledo on that possession. It is a cold, breezy night. It'll be tough on the kickers down the stretch. Superman in our college football studios coming up on the Dish Halftime Report. Playoff rankings week two are out. Greg McElroy, fresh from the ranking show, is with us with his opinions. We'll hear from Sonny Dykes on his thoughts on where the Horned Frogs stand. And, of course, look ahead to the big matchup Coach Dykes has against Texas on Saturday. Dave, Coach, see you at the half. Thank you, Zubin. Of course, Georgia looked every bit the number one team with their massive win against Tennessee over the weekend. So on a first down and 10, Ball State hands it off to Steele and will pick up four yards after the 34-yard line. Now, we were, had certainly had some entertainment during that last break. This is, you just quit laughing at this one. Oh. Watch, watch, watch the girl on the left here. That's a dollar. <laughs> Bam! She's down. Didn't even finish the spins. <laughs> Why does that make me laugh every time? Every time it gets me. <laughs> uh, 
Jackson goes in motion, but they'll hand it off to Steele again. And he'll pick it, take it out to the 38-yard line, brought down by Johnson, who now has five tackles. Steele tonight, 14 carries, 94 yards, and a couple of touchdowns, and he'll have it out to the 40-yard line. And this is the type of game that Ball State wants right now. The ability to just let, let Steele pound away at you right now. Control the tempo of the game. Let his physicality try to wear down this Toledo defense. Keep their high-scoring offense on the sidelines. It's exactly the type of game. Now, they they do, they got to get some production and some explosive plays, though, out of the passing game at some point. Paddock. Comes near side, pass is caught there by Pemberton. He breaks a tackle and gets it out over the 40 to the 43-yard line, tripped up by Judge Culpepper. Great job reading the screen right there by Culpepper. Heads up like following the offensive line out there and making the tackle on the screen pass. Second down and eight, steal back in the game. Split back formation out of the shotgun. They'll hand it off to Steele, off the left side. He has a first down inside Toledo territory. Down to the 46 yard line. He is up over 100 yards. That's the eighth time this season he has gone over 100 yards, the 11th time in his career after that 12 yard pickup. This is the first time we've seen this look, the two back look. So they run the counter, but they run it this time with a lead back. Coming around the left, Pember, to the, the uh, who is that? Uh, Jones in there as the lead back coming around the edge. Pemberton yeah. back in the game now. At running back to the left of Paddock. Pemberton with the carry. He gets hit immediately, but will fall forward to Pemberton the 45 the yard line. Gets a yard out of that. Boy, the run game for Ball State has been solid here in the first the half. One, they average 100. 47 yards per game on the ground. That's fifth in the MAC. Paddock, back shoulder throw there, trying to hit Jason Jackson. It's incomplete. Well, they just can't get it going. He's now five and 14. They they just they they're struggling getting any separation from these DBs at Toledo. The athleticism. He tried the sluggo, the slant and go on the double move. Didn't fool Chris McDonald at all. He's right there and great job playing the ball. Sees it. And then th we talked to the Ball State coaches. They wanted to get some explosive plays. They need to find ways to get explosive plays in the pass game. And it hasn't happened yet here tonight. Cardinals are two of eight on third downs. Paddock under pressure and he has dropped way back at the 39 yard line. Johnson with the sack. That'll be a loss of 15. And you look there, they caused confusion. They got him. Johnson now with six and a half tackles for loss. His second sack of the year. The senior out of Detroit, Michigan. He and they, they think he's a, he's got NFL talent and NFL ability on him right here. But you see, they get him in an empty, they go to an empty formation, but they're going to try to chip off the edge. A tight formation and an empty formation. You see Johnson sneak up here late, miscommunication. No one picks him up because they're in the empty set. Everybody scat releases. And he's up in there on Paddock before Paddock can do anything with the ball. Gets the sack. He's a dynamic player at the linebacker position. One of those super seniors. Going to get his degree in mechanical engineering in December. So fourth down and forever. That one will. Bounce out of bounds inside the 30. Let's you go see down. the wind right there. Knock that ball down. Let's go down to Taylor. 
Yeah, you mentioned Deontay Johnson's degree. He actually has already received it in mechanical engineering technology. And I actually talked to him about the parallel that he sees in that and the game of football. And he said it's made all the difference in how he sees the game. He said, even as a kid, if you gave me a toy, I wanted to take it apart to see how all the pieces work together rather than play with the toy. That's how I play the game. He said, I diagnose. I'm curious about how each piece works together as a unit. It's made all the difference for him on the field as well. Well, he's just a great story, and it continues to get better for Toledo. Tied at 14, getting late here in the second quarter. Finn. There, the flag comes out on the near side as Finn slides down around the 34 yard line. On the complete opposite side of the field, there is a flag. Holding defense number one, 10 yard penalty from the previous spot or from the end of the run, automatic first down. That's on Nick Jones right in front of that Toledo bench. Second penalty of the game against Ball State. Penalties have been an issue today for Toledo. They've been flagged six times for 60 yards. Ben has time going up top near side and there is a flag. A couple of flags will come out as Jerwan Newton was tripped up by Nick Jones. Been a tough couple of plays for Mr. Jones. Well, that's a tough one right there. It looks like he, he, he was trying to make a play on the ball. Their feet just got tangled up. Pass interference, defense number one. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. It was on a double move, I think. They went on a double move right there, but so there's a little bit behind trying to catch up. To the receiver, you see him right here, though. Oh, there he is, yep, going over the back of the DB right there with his other two with his hand. Ooh, big collision at the 38-yard line. That'll be a gain of six. Micah Kelly took the brunt of that one, but he holds on to the football. Coming near side, low throw. Trying to hit Devin Maddox, who has a touchdown catch tonight. But he can't scoop it off the turf. And this is one of these situations here. Now you have 35, and with a guy like Daquan Penn, I think your whole playbook's open. I, you're really in a two-down situation right here. And the head coach, you, the head coach you're going to call, uh, as, the, as a play caller here, something that you can go and go for it. In your mind, you've already made up that you're going to go for it on fourth down if you don't have it. Ben with a straight drop. Has time, but now comes near side. Trying to tell everybody to run down the field, and I'll just get it myself. And he does so as he's out of bounds at the 30-yard line, and that'll be good enough for a first down and an eight-yard pickup. And I think Finn right there, he realized it was man coverage. He, he wanted to go to his back out into the flat. He got caught up. Slipping out of it, gets all caught up in man coverage. And then once Finn sees that it's, it's man coverage, he's waving everybody, hey, go deep and I'm just going to take off running myself as the man coverage guys are chasing. Then now with four rushes and 19 yards, 164 yards through the air and a couple of touchdowns. First down and 10. Hand it off to Micah Kelly off the left side. He'll get three yards down to the 27. Clock moving at 124, 123. Pick up the tempo right here if you're going to run the ball on on that play. Toledo with two timeouts. Ball State has three timeouts left. Here's Finn dancing around, and he'll be dropped back at the 37-yard line by Sidney Houston. 
in a three-man rush right here. Three-man rush by Ball State. They're able to get pressure with three. They got drop eight into coverage and zone coverage. You can see nowhere to go with the ball downfield. Finn drops his eyes down, look to scramble. And a great job by Sidney Houston in a three-man rush to win his battle, get the sack, and create the third and long here for Ball State, for uh, Toledo. Defensive coordinator Tyler Stockton was telling us Sidney Houston has one of those just relentless motors, and we saw it on display there. Yeah, and, and you look at this defense, Tyler Stockton, a great young coach, played football at Notre Dame. It was great getting to talk to him, too. He was working. He, he was doing internships at Morgan Stanley as his MBA from Notre Dame. <laughs> Wondering what he's doing out here coaching some football, but he, he said he missed it so much when he was working, when he was doing some stuff with Wall Street people. He said, my, my crowd's the football yeah, exactly. crowd. I want to be back out there <laughs> coaching it. ball on the field. And he's a great young defensive coordinator. On third down, Fenn. Pump fakes, throws underneath, and they're going to say the pass is incomplete at the 25-yard line. Trying to hit Blankamsey and just couldn't get it there. Yeah, and again, this is one of those you're looking maybe to get part of it back, get yourself into field goal range, and then, you know, make that decision. And it looks like Toledo's going to... Looks like they're going to bring out the punt team. Okay. Interesting here at the 35, not going for it. Ball State's not had a lot of success throwing the football right here. So it's an interesting, with this much time left, to punt. That one will be oh, almost down, but it'll sail into the end zone. So it'll come out to the 20 yard line. You always would tell those guys that the, the gunners on the outside, anytime the ball is going to let you can't let the ball hit inside the five. And even right there, you saw I didn't get to judge it right there, didn't see it. Uh, that's Jacquez Stewart. Always tell me, even if you can just touch it, it sometimes deadens the ball, it doesn't take a bounce. As crazy as it sounds, you can just even touch the ball anytime. Don't let it bounce inside the five because you never know that football bounces in some funny directions. So Ball State has a long way to go with 43 seconds. On the clock, they do have all three timeouts. Paddock will throw underneath, pass is caught there. That'll be a first down out to the 35-yard line. Jackson picks up 15 yards. Clock at 30 seconds now. Paddock going far side, that one is incomplete, but a flag comes out late. They were trying to hit Jason Jackson again. Chris McDonald over there in coverage. And they had man-to-man -man across the board right there. He had some matchups. Pass interference. Defense, number 13. Yard penalty, automatic first down. Aggressive defense by Toledo right there, but left man-to-man one-on-one on the outside. He gets a piece of that holding that jersey on the back side right there. On the back shoulder throw. Coach, that's seven penalties for 75 yards in the first half against Toledo. First down and 10. They bring some pressure. Take a timeout quickly here. Yeah, 20 seconds on the clock, and they will use one of those timeouts. Jackson again comes up with the catch. You know, right now, you're, you're bringing the team over, and you're going to look and talk to everybody about where we need to get to, what our goal of the yard line is. We have, we have two more timeouts, so we have plenty of time. We can utilize the whole field, but we're going into the wind right now. So the discussion is not, hey, we need to get a touchdown right here, and we got to force the ball down the field. It is we have, we have two plays with timeouts available to us, we really want to get the ball at least to the 25-yard line, at least going into this one. We were watching the kickers warm up before the game, and the ball's really being knocked down going in this direction. So really looking for two 10-yard plays is what you're looking for if you're ball state right here, to get the ball into field goal range and try a kick at the end of the half. 
Here is Ben Von Gutten. Field goal kicker for Ball State. And Toledo will take a timeout. Third and final of the half. Van Gutten out of okay. Wesley, and he transferred in from Wesley to Division Three school. Now I don't care. You know the one thing about kickers: if you can kick it to v Division Three, it doesn't make any difference if it's Division Two, II, Division One. If you can kick it, you can kick it. Well, they play on the same size field. Yeah. But it's the same size goalpost. I played D three football. <laughs> it was the same size field, but you know the, the little bigger stadiums that you kick in. But the, the rest, every other dimension is exactly the same. So if you can kick, you can kick. And so. He has yet to attempt one from over 50 yards this year, as long as 47. So, And that's why you look at it. You know, I've always talked, to, when you talk to kickers at most, and, and even any kicker, once you get the ball to the 25, you feel that's that should be makeable range. You're not asking them to do something crazy. Second down coming up, second and five with 20 seconds left. Paddock, a little pump fake across the middle. That was almost picked off. He was trying to hit Johannes Tyler. The first time we've really seen Tyler targeted tonight. Yeah, and I, I think they're trying really to go outside. They're trying to try a slant and go on the outside, a little double move, thinking Toledo's going to come with some pressure. And they, they went to a max protection. You saw him there pump fake. Didn't have it. Goes to his check down underneath. Didn't have it. Again, you're looking. I, I, instead of taking the home run shot here, you, you need two 10-yard plays to give your kicker an opportunity to have a shot at it. Now with two timeouts still, and you have a back like Carson Steele, you're still in running ability because you can call a timeout after the play. So Toledo still has to defend the run if you get the look you want. Well, you... Second, like Ball State coach is complaining Ball about State, something. They're second in the half. And that's not a timeout you want to use right there with the clock stopped in this situation. Dude, I think the play it. clock was running down, and he thought they should have reset the play clock, and they had to burn a timeout that's so valuable right now. As time running down in the situation that you're in. Seventh year at Ball State. Listen, they're trying to do something they've never done at Ball State, and that's go to three straight bowl games. Now he's done a great job of building a program. When you build a program, you want to be a consistent winner. And doing that, you get to bowl games, you get extra practices. It helps you develop players and develop your team. Listen, if they fall behind, don't worry. <laughs> They're really good when they've got you right where they want you. <laughs> they've had four come from behind victories this year. <laughs> Not the way you want to end the half. Paddock is dropped at the turf, a loss of a dozen. And the clock is going to just tick down. And I think we're going to head to the locker room all tied up at 14, and that will be the case. And a great move right there by Nate Gavon right there coming underneath of the tackle. So we are tied at 14 at the half. Time for our halftime report. Let's get it to Zubin and Greg in the studio, guys. It's all yours. Dave, Coach Mullen. Take away the sacks, and they have over 100 yards rushing. Fair catch called for by Jacquez Stewart. And they'll take it out to the 25-yard line. Dave Neal back alongside the coach, Dan Mullen. Taylor Davis down on the sidelines. And certainly, when you look at that first half, you and I were talking about, there really wasn't much rhythm in that. So how do you get that going? Well, you have to, the consistency. And that was the problem in the first half of the game right there. There were four really good touchdown drives. Then everything else was kind of three and outs, led by 11 punts. And so both teams have got to find a rhythm offensively. And you got to give a lot of credit to these defenses. Winning the game up front has been big for both teams on both sides of the ball so far. Well, we'll see how Toledo comes out here in the second half. This is the highest scoring team in the MAC. They'll hand it off left side out to the 30 yard line. Game six on that opening play. Let's go downstairs, check in once again with Taylor Davis. Yeah, guys, I spoke with Jason Candle at halftime. I asked him what he thought about his offense in the first half. He said, honestly, I give credit to the Ball State defense. They've done a great job handling our 11 and 12 personnel, and they're shutting us down on the perimeter. He said, Daquan really had to get into a rhythm, and we need to see that explode more into the second half. Now, defensively, he said, 
Carson Steele is an effective, powerful back. We knew that coming in. But his emphasis is on third downs. He said, we've got to be smarter knowing they're going to want to give it to him on third down. But he said, look, it's a tie game. We have 30 minutes left. We have talked about these goals since January. Now is when you go take it. It's funny, you were talking to me, too, about both coaches, probably a little unhappy, but it's easier to be unhappy when you're tied at half. Yeah, you, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're unhappy with the inconsistencies of the first half. You see Coach Campbell come out running at three plays in a row. He was, he was uh, upset with the ability to run the football in the first half. They tried to come out and establish the run, but that, that front seven of Ball State has shut them down so far. Now yeah, three run plays and not much to show for it. It's now fourth down and four, and so here comes the Toledo punt team on the field. Cole Pierce, by the way, up to seven tackles tonight from his linebacker spot. And those two linebackers for, for Ball State have been all over the field today. Fair catch called for by Jackson around the 33-yard line. So that's where Ball State will have their opening possession. And the question becomes, we know that Steele can run the football, but how do you get some passing game in this one? Paddock just 7 of 17 for 34 yards. Yeah, and they've locked down the receiver. We talked to the coaches beforehand, and they, they really wanted to say, what we're missing is we, we lead the league in total plays, but it's because we're going on 10 and 12 play drives when we score, we haven't hit the explosives, and we need the explosives. So uh, let's see if they come out throwing. They want to get the explosive. Toledo came out, ran a three in a row, trying to establish a run. Let's see if they come out and try to take a shot and get an early explosive here. Another reverse coming near side. Here is Jackson on the carry. He's out over the 40 to the 41-yard line. When you're not winning vertically down the field, the way to get the, the receivers to the ball is, is in the run game right now. And, you know, Jay Sean Jackson, they haven't gotten him the ball a ton in the pass game, want to get the ball in his hands. Well, a little fake reverse all, with all eyes on Steele. It's not a bad way to get him the ball. Here is Steele between the Break. guards. Breaks one tackle. He's in the open field. He's to the 35 and dropped down at the 34-yard line by Zachary Ford, but another big hitter from Carson Steele, 25 yards. And an injured player back at the 41-yard line for Ball State. Jalen Turner, the right guard, in obvious pain. Now, they've rotated some guys over the last couple weeks Ball State has up front. Wow, well, they attend to him. We'll step aside. Tied at 14. Feeding them the ball, and this is exactly the game plan that Ball State wanted to have going in the third quarter. A sophomore out of Greenwood, Indiana, the former Indiana Mr. Football. 82 touchdowns in his high school career. Let's go down to Taylor. Yeah, guys, there is no individual that has been statistically more productive in the MAC this year than Carson Steele. And I asked him how he's done it, and he said it's about availability. He said he has completely changed his mindset around nutrition and conditioning. He said, you know, in high school, I was too consumed with just being a weightlifter. When I got to this level of play and the level of, you know, workload he's taking on, he said the best thing I could do for my team was be available. I've worked in agility. I've worked in more rest days and uh, you know 7% body fat doesn't help. Stewart, fair catch. Yeah, I mean this guy is a, uh, I know it's a cliche, <laughs> but a lean mean fight machine. Yeah, he must be on, on that Dave Neal workout plan right there. Look at that. <laughs> That's the funniest thing you said. <laughs> well, I mean 7% body fat. Yeah, but see like look, us combined 6% right there. We're, we have that lean body mass right there. But if you look at those numbers, 615 on the back squat and bench presses over 405 pounds. You look at guys, I mean, that's, well, I mean, well over, uh, almost 200 pounds over his weight. Uh, 
Dave and Dan, 6%. 6% muscle. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a heck of a catch right there from Thomas Zeros. Zeros with a 25-yard pickup for the Rockets. Great job on the back shoulder fade right here. CZ has his big, the big, the matchup on when you have a big receiver on the size, put it on his back shoulder. Zyros again with the reception. That'll pick up eight. Toledo going fast. This is a freshman they really like because of his size. The matchup he creates is six foot three out there in the perimeter. The local guy right, right here from St. John's in Toledo. That handoff goes to Micah Kelly. Number three, Micah Kelly with the ball carrier. Great job by the guard pulling around right there. Vinny Scurry coming, coming through, leading the hole. I, Toledo's got needs to really get this running game going right now. Take a look at that block right there, coming, pulling through. The block on the edge. Toledo needs to get this running game going a little bit to keep some balance. They'll run it again with Kelly off the right side, and he gets to the 29, stood up right there and dropped after a six-yard pickup. Big hit on the back end from Jordan Riley to finally tip him over. Engelhoff, the first one there, though. And again, Scurry pulling around. You look at the counter run. Guard and tackle pulling around, sealing it off right there. Boy, an injured Cardinal, Cole Pierston, the redshirt junior linebacker. He is slow to get up, and he has been one of their best defensive players all season. He's just a great story. This is a guy that walked onto the football team last year. They end up, because of injuries, giving him his first career start and had 14 total tackles against Army. The next morning, Mike New was like, uh, son, how about you, uh, would you like to be on scholarship? We'd like to keep you around. <laughs> As a coach, that's one of the best feelings. And you see that they, they show the emotional team meetings and handing out scholarships to guys that are former walk-ons. But it's an unbelievable, as a head coach, there's no better feeling than a guy that has worked and earned it than to hand him a scholarship. Didn't hurt that he had 14 total tackles that in helped. his first start, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, the ninth annual Armed Forces Classic is happening on Friday, Veterans Day. Michigan State number two, Gonzaga, square off on the flight deck of the USS Abraham Lincoln in San Diego. Hopefully it'll quit raining out there. Coverage begins at 6.30 Eastern, 3.30 Pacific on ESPN. And of course, you can always find it on the ESPN app. It's just part of our salute to veterans that's happening all week long. Should be a lot of fun, outstanding programs, coaches going at it, 6.30 Eastern time. Now we'll try to get an update on the situation with Pierce. See if Toledo wants to run right at his spot, and they will try to. Not much on the ground there for Mike Kelly, John Harris. The nose tackle steps up to make that play. And you look here in the second you half, Toledo's really coming out, trying to establish the run game, trying to keep their balance on offense. On third down, they'll have enough for the first down. Then takes it himself, and he'll pick up five yards. Nice quarterback draw right here, and that's the, what Finn brings to the table, his ability on the with his legs, on quarterback design runs on third down, they get man-to-man, -man, he's able to pick up the first down. Finn looking to throw, coming near side, pass is caught there by Newton, he turns the corner and will get out of bounds around the five yard line, they'll spot him down at the three. A 20-yard pickup. They've had a lot of success with this, pulling the guard out in front of them on the play-action pass. Get him outside the pocket. Well, sail right. See the backside pull around out in front of him. And off right side, going to Penny Boone, and he breaks one tackle, dives for the end zone, and he'll get Touchdown. there. Touchdown, Toledo. The third rushing touchdown of the year for Penny Boone. 
And Toledo storms right back to tie this one up or come close to tying it up, depending on the point after. Penny Boone, the big back at Toledo, shows that he can break a tackle too. Run through the defender and get himself into the end zone. Clunky to attempt the point after. Kick is on the way, and he hammers it through the upright, so we are tied at 21. That's how you answer it. That was the drive that Toledo needed. They wanted to come out, be more balanced on offense. They were able to run the ball this drive. Penny Boone finishes it off with a physical run into the end zone. Great drive here by Toledo to come back and answer. And it all started, it's Daquan Finn. First, the back shoulder throw to Thomas Zyros, the local guy. Went right back to him again, using the big guy and his size. The play action pass, you've seen Finn much better, more efficient, getting outside the pocket. And then you're not stopping the big man with an arm tackle, Penny Boone at 235. He shows that he can break some tackles too out here and punches it in to tie the game up for Toledo. Yeah, now Finn, 15 to 24, 217. There is Penny Boone, 612, 35. That'll make their head coach, Jason Candle, a happy man. And he wanted to come out. He said he wanted to come out, be balanced, and establish the run, and they were able to do that. Who bounces off of Ball State. That's a loose football, but Ball State <laughs> will come away with it. Some of these fluky plays that <laughs> happen right here. Uh, miss hit by the kicker and boom, off the uh -oh. face. <laughs> Get those big guys up there not used to handling those things. But Ball State will have the football. Tied at 21, 9.46 to go in the third quarter. I think they're going to be comfortable handling the ball to Carson Steele right here. <laughs> Yes. That's a good security blanket on a cold night. Yeah. He's only here in Toledo. Only averaging nine and a half <laughs> yards a carry. Up to 171 yards on 18 attempts. Paddock buys a little time, dumps it off underneath that pass to Casey Call. This is the play to Casey Call. Casey's brother, of course, Blake McCall, a linebacker for the Cardinals. Both played for their dad in high school. Family affair. Game of football. Hand off right side. Nowhere to go for Carson Steele. They finally shut him down. Well, it's hard to keep him on the I mean get him on the ground. He's taking three, four shots and still won't go down. Yeah, and that's what Toledo needs to do though. It's you, the success they've had is when they can bottle them up inside and get a bunch of hats to the football. Physical close down the running lane inside and get a bunch of hats to the football. One guy's not gonna bring him down. They need to get everybody involved in a big group tackle. Third down and five. Steele takes a breather. Will Jones gets the carry, and he trying to push the pile to the 40-yard line. He'll be stopped there for a gain of two, but it'll be fourth down and about four. And here comes the Ball State punt team, Dallas again. We haven't called his name a bunch tonight. 79 tackles, the Ohio State transfer and linebacker. That's just three stops tonight. He's made an impact all year on this defense, and they're going to need him to show up here as the game goes on. But that's what we saw in the first half here, though. Great drives. Followed by some sputtering, the three and outs, the, the non-consistency on offense is what the coaches want to get fixed. Beal back to return this punt. Fair catch called for at the 21-yard line. And there are no flags on the field. Obviously a really big game in the back for the Western Division lead. And if you're Jason Candle, a win here tonight and you are looking really good to get back to Detroit in the MAC Yeah, you're completely in the driver's seat. They still have to play Western Michigan, but they hold the tie for the hold with a win tonight. They hold the tiebreaker over everybody else. 
and really put yourself in a position to get up there to the championship game, which is, that's what you work for. That's what you can control. Ball State, of course, they win here. They would control their destiny. Here's Fenn trying to control this football. Heaves it down the field, hoping his guy can make a play, and he does around the 41-yard line. The catch is made there by Barkley. That's a gain of 39 yards. And you see, that's what he's able to do. The Fenn, scramble, keep the play alive right there. I don't think he's 100% healthy. He's kind of limping around, so he's looking to throw. That's the second time tonight he's thrown a ball up for his receivers to give them opportunities to make plays on the field. And Barkley comes through with the catch, boxing out the defensive back and making the big grab. 256 yards through the air for Fenn. That handoff goes to Micah Kelly. And Kelly's down to the 38-yard line. And I think Finn, you look, watch him out here right now. I know we we're, were saying he was getting his, his right ankle taped up earlier. He looks, he doesn't look like he wants to run the ball as much as I've no. seen him in the past. And he, even on these, he's doing a good job using his athleticism to keep plays alive. But he's looking to throw the ball. He's not looking to scramble to run. He's looking to scramble to throw right now. Six rushes, 16 yards. He came in averaging 65 yards a game on the ground. He'll run with the big back, Penny Boone. Big collision down around the 32-yard line. He'll be a yard shy of the first down. Give him six. But you know when you hit Penny Boone. <laughs> This is the football we like this time of year in November up here. They love this up here in Ohio. The physical, look at Ooh. lower the pads. The ability to drop your pad level that low in the leg drive to finish the run. Jordan That's Riley's fantastic. Going, he's going to remember that, that hit. Jordan Riley with safety for Ball State. Here comes Finn around the left side. He will slide inside the 30. Good enough for the first down. Boy, he, just, and he, he looks like he's favoring that right ankle a little bit right there. Good, good job getting out there, but even sliding after the run right there. Get know where the first down was, got it, and got down on the zone read. He, he battled back from the, the, the shoulder injury and now dealing with the ankle injury. Then we'll throw it here. Air mails it into the end zone. A little miscommunication there with Jawan Newton. But I will say this. Finn is more than just a running quarterback. We have seen that through the air tonight. 16 out of 26, 256, a couple of touchdowns and no interceptions. Yeah, he, he beats you. He can beat you with his arm, you know. It, it, it is, so it's not like it takes his game away, the ability to run, and his athleticism still to keep plays alive is huge. And I'll tell you what, where he's made a difference with his legs is some third downs of some quarterback draws to get the first down. Wide side throw to the out. That one is caught, but not much there for Barkley. I'll just pick up. Spot his forward progress inside the 25 to the 24 yard. That's give him about four yards on that. Big third down play going into the wind here tonight. Even though it looks like it's dying down just a little bit, you're right on the kind of the, the edge of where you want to be on field goal range. This is a big third down play here. Mason Candle, the head coach and the play caller for Toledo, dials this one up, going toward the end zone, underthrown, and it is a picked off. Interception, ball stayed in the end zone. Uzadima comes up with the interception. His second of the year, and it snuffs out the Toledo drive. I'll tell you what, that is AJ right there, came up with the big play. He's their top defensive back, the guy they, they count on to make plays. Leads the nation and pass breakups, but he didn't break this one up. He said, give me that ball. I got some ball skills. I'll take it away from you. Who's going to stop me now? Quan Finn just threw his ninth interception, or excuse me, tenth interception of the year in the end zone. Snuff out the Toledo drive as we are tied at 21. And, and 
you know, you and I were watching him this week on tape and stuff, and it's just, it's not the same dude that we've seen on, on video. Of course, he didn't play in their last game because of a bad shoulder, but now just something just doesn't look right. Yeah, it just, it looks like he's struggling, and he's such a dynamic athlete. We know he can throw the ball, but he's also such a dynamic athlete with his feet, he just doesn't look 100% right now. Let's go down to Taylor. Yeah, guys, it's interesting. It was very early in the first quarter that he had to go into the medical tent to get that ankle wrapped. And obviously, when I saw he was in the tent, I assumed it was that shoulder again, right? But he was getting that ankle taped. And, you know, sometimes it makes you wonder when a guy returns from injury if that is so heavily on his mind that he overcompensates in other areas because it's definitely been bothering him the entirety of this game. You can just tell by his body language something's not right. Here's Paddock, he'll slide down around the 30. Of course, he took a really big shot in a game against Buffalo. And this is what happened. Uh, I mean, well, this is what knocked him out of the game, and he was down for a while. Yeah, and you, you see that the hit right here with it, that coming, and, and a clean hit, but right on that throwing shoulder. And that knocked him out last week's game. It was great to see him get back and throw him the ball well, but it, it's looking like he's really having some problems pushing off that right foot in his throwing motion and finishing the throws right now. They would lose that game to Buffalo, 34-27. Here's Steele, breaks a couple of tackles and drags a defender with him out near the 40-yard line. Dallas Gant hanging on. That is six tackles for Dallas. And he had a great job mixing up the formations here by, by Ball State. They get into a really, a, kind of almost a goal line set with a bunch of big guys in there. Run the power play off tackle with the backside guard pulling through and a fullback leading up ahead. Establishing the power run and, and Carson Steele's been a power runner all night long. Pemberton back in the backfield now. He'll get the handoff. He's to the 40-yard line on first down. He'll pick up a couple of yards. Gant again sticking his nose in there. Steal right back in. I mean, he's been the offense right now. Ball State has, as a team, has 219 yards, and Steele has 183 of them so far. So it's been his show all night long. Average of 25 carries a game. He sits at 21 right now with three touchdowns. I think we'll get to that number tonight. <laughs> if they get a lead, we'll see a big night from Steele. This time he's able to get stopped at the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard, but not a whole lot of room to run off the right side. Brought down there by Reagan. <laughs> Brings up another third down. Ball State's 3 and 12 on third down of the night. Have, th this is where they need to, to keep these drives alive, to have more success. If you want to continue to establish the run, you've got to convert one of these third downs to keep some flow going within your offense. Here comes some heat. They pick it up. Passes complete by Paddock out to Brady Hunt. And that'll be good enough to move the change right at midfield. That's a gain of nine. And Toledo brought the blitz right there, had man-to-man -man coverage right there. It's actually, it was Tanner Cozio, the other tight end in man-to-man -man coverage. Great job by Paddock, hanging in the pocket and letting Cozio use his size and putting the ball right on his outside shoulder for the first down. Trying to set up a screen to steal, and he just has to bury it into the turf. Yeah, good decision there by Paddock. The screen's not there. Play second and 10. Don't have to force it. Don't make a mistake. Let's play second down. Mike knew. And you can see the, frust the frustration, just the lack of flow within the offense right now. Flip flop the tight ends again to the right side. They'll hand it to Steele, who tries to work against the grain a bit. He gets it into Toledo territory. A few yards on that pickup, but it'll be third down coming up. Eight yards. 
Steele will leave the game, and now you've got a big third down opportunity here for a team that's really struggled on third downs. Four of 13 today for Ball State. Yeah, and, and, and again, again, just that, that lack of flow within, within the offense to keep it running. Four-man rush. Paddock tries to get it away. Pressure came, forced their quick throw. And that'll be fourth down coming up. And he had Johannes Tyler uncovered out of the bunch set. They lost coverage right down the middle of the field. He was completely uncovered running down the middle of the field. Pressure got to him before he could get there. Darius Alexander created the pressure, but, it, but if you look in the bunch set right here, they create the mix-up, and there he is wide open down the middle oh. of the field, but the pressure gets to him before he's able to find him and get the ball off. Oh, I mean, that was wide open. There was nobody within 15 yards of him. Fair catch called for by Beal. He'll take it at the 13, and that's where Toledo will have it. 30 seconds to go here in the third quarter, all knotted up at 21 apiece. Mike New and this Ball State team, of course, won the 2020 MAC championship. The last MAC championship for Toledo was back in 2017. Jason Candle, the head coach and play caller for Toledo, trying to dial up some offense here with a quarterback that just doesn't look 100% tonight. Yeah, and he's, they've, they've tried to be patient here in the third quarter to establish the run game a little bit more, but they, they want to get back to getting their explosive athletes in the open field the opportunity to make plays. And off right side, big run there from Micah Kelly. He'll have a first down out over the 25 to the 27 yard line. A gain of 14 on the play. Yeah, Mike, Micah Kelly out of Mississippi comes up here. Great job folding around by the center to lead the block up through. Kelly again on the carry. Picks up a couple of yards to the 24. Newsom coming up from his corner spot to make that tackle. And that will do it for the third quarter. We were tied at 14 at halftime. Not much has changed. Now we're tied at 21. Steele continues to run with power and passion to help his club. And speaking of power and passion, Penny Boone getting in the end zone. Let me show you how to be. And welcome back to ESPN College Football, presented by Ram Trucks. Dave Neal, Dan Mullen, Taylor Davis, on a chilly night here in Toledo. We are all tied up at 21, heading to the final 15 minutes, if not more, in a big MAC Western Division showdown between Toledo and Ball State. On second down, they'll hand it off to Micah Kelly. Well, th these are the top two teams in the MAC West battling for that that title and, and, and getting control really here in November of their own destiny. And they've played that way. Uh, it's been a little herky-jerky back and forth for the offenses, defenses stepping up, making plays. But this is what you expect out of the top two teams. It's coming down to the final 15 minutes. Both teams are, are fighting for every inch during this game to get control of the Mac West. Well, we had a penalty filled Ball first start. half. Offense, number 71, five yard penalty, third down. But that is our first penalty of the second half. Yeah, man, they cleaned it up, but the, the penalties, you know, Toledo, it, it, we talked about it earlier. You know, one of the big focal points for this team was to clean up penalties that they had so many last year that they really felt held them back. And tonight, the penalties have really hurt them coming at some really inopportune times. Here's Finn, pocket collapses, and he is dropped inside the 15-yard line. Woodard gets back for the sack. And a loss of 10. And it, 
and a great job by Woodard right here in the three-man rush. Only rushing three to get home. They drop eight into coverage. Nowhere to go with the ball for Daquan Finn. You can see him struggling a little bit. He's, he's not able to use his legs, which is one of his strengths as well. But a great job on the rush to get the sack by Woodard and give his team great field position for their first possession of the fourth quarter. He'll have it inside the 50-yard line for Davion Woodard. That is his fourth sack of the year. So Ball State with a short field to work with. We're all tied up at 21 here in Toledo. Well, they were ready to play some football, and so were we. So here we are. Paddock first play on first down, and he'll sling it out to the outside. That one caught by Brady Hunt. That'll be a first down to the 31, a gain of 16. Great ball placement on the outside shoulder on the throw. They go with the play action with good field position, looking to take a shot down the field. Hits his big tight end on a back shoulder throw. Carson Steele, the single setback. Paddock under center. And will hand it off to Steele. Works the left side, makes a man miss, but a flag comes in. There may be a holding call against Ball State here. Holding offense, number 80. Ten-yard penalty, first down. Brady Hunt made the big catch on the play before. Just got his hands caught outside here. We're running, we're running, we call this the duo play. You see the two double teams inside. He's one-on-one -on, -one on the defensive end. And just get his hands caught. Dragging Jamal Hines down to the ground right there. That'll back him up to the 41-yard line. First down and 20. Here's Steele off the left side, bouncing around. Marshall Steele coming off a game where he had 192 yards on the ground against Kent State. Now he's trying to chase that number down. Steele up to 188. So many hidden little yards in there. Him falling more than bouncing off of some tackles. And it's after one, two, three yards he gets every time he runs the football, wearing down that defense. Actually giving 192 now. He's averaging eight yards a carry. Paddock going up top, and this one is incomplete. Hunt was the intended target there. Max and Hook here in coverage with him. This Toledo defense has done really well all night long, matching up on this dynamic duo of Brady Hunt and Tanner Koziel, the two tight ends that are, are have size and athleticism as receivers in the pass game for Ball State. The secondary of Toledo has matched them all night long. Try to create the one-on-one -on -one with Brady Hunt up top by himself. Paddock comes this way with it, and Steele makes the catch, and he is immediately dropped there by Dallas Gann, who now has 10 total tackles. We talked about he was a quiet first half, but not anymore. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's been, it's been going on on this. They try to go with the screen. Great job by, by Gant, sees it. You see his burst right there, the speed to the ball. The transfer out of Ohio State is an impact player. Made an impact play right there on third down to force the punt. Transferred back home, he's from right here in Toledo. Coach has said he fit perfectly into this scheme, just a Humble guy coming from Ohio State. They are glad to have him with 10 tackles tonight. Leads him in tackles this season. Now the offense needs to get it cranked up. We're tied at 21 here in Toledo. Man, we have a great women's basketball game coming your way on Friday. Aliyah Boston and the defending national champ, South Carolina, are ranked number one once again. They'll take on Diamond Miller in the 17th ranked 
Maryland Terrapins from College Park. This should be a really good test for both those teams. Coverage begins at 6 o'clock Eastern on ESPN2. And, of course, you can always find it on the ESPN app. Dawn Staley has got a juggernaut on her hands. Again, off the left side, that handoff goes to Micah Kelly. Take it out over the 15. You see Coach Campbell here, he said at halftime he wanted to establish the run and, and have some patience with it, and that's what they've done here in the, in the second half is really emphasize the running game for Toledo. Ten fifty-two to go. J.C. Campbell in his seventh year here at Toledo. 51-30 and 30 is his mark. Penny Boone in it, running back. Fenn going deep down the middle of the field, and that one is incomplete. There are no flags. Trying to hit Jerwan Newt, Nick Jones, in his back pocket. Great coverage by Nick Jones. Not interfering right there. See the hand on, but that's fine. He just has the hand on him. Eye on the ball, plays the ball the whole time in great position. Great play by the Nick Jones there in the secondary to force a third down here for Toledo. He'll go underneath with it, knocked away at the last minute. That'll bring up a fourth down. That is the sixth three and out for this Toledo offense. And that's what's frustrating. You don't get into rhythm with the three and out. So they try to the, the rubber out, the, the mesh route underneath. Great play right there by Jaquan Amos. Getting his hand up there, not grabbing the defense, the, the receiver's back, just using his hand to knock the ball away. Fair catch called for there by Jackson. He will take it. And another short field for Ball State. Can they do anything with it? We're tied at 21, just over 10 minutes to play. ESPN College Football is presented by Ram Trucks, built to serve. We are tied at 21. Toledo and Bowling Green playing for the top spot in the Mac Western Division tonight here in the Glass Bowl. <laughs> well, if you're looking for some offense for Ball State, it comes in the form of number 33, Carson Steele. He has been really all they've had tonight. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, handing them the ball, and, and it's really just in the run game. I know he's been a lot in the pass game. You look at it with only negative two yards receiving. But if you look at it, he's 77% of the team's offensive production tonight, and it's all on the ground with his legs pounding away at this Toledo defense. We thought he was going to be a key to the game, and here we are, 10 minutes left, first place in the MAC West on the line. They got great field position. I expect to see a lot of him on this drive. No delay handoff to Steele comes off the left side. He slips. You know, back to those numbers, what was it? What did you say, 70? 77%. That, that's at our sinus college education. Right there. That's, hey, it paid off right there. Your parents should be proud. Hey, um, he came in averaging 34% of the team's offense. That's the fifth most in the FBS. But tonight, he has been truly, you say it all the time, but he truly has been a one-man show. He, he really has. And, uh, you know, and, and but that's what he wanted to be. He's the guy that wants to put this team on his shoulder with the title on the line. Tried to break a couple of tackles, stays on his feet. We'll get about a yard or two. Steal the ball, Again, coming out of high school, uh, Ball, ball State was on him early, and certainly he appreciated that. But Indiana talked to him about potentially switching to linebacker. So did Purdue, but he felt like Ball State, A, they were on him. He felt some loyalty there, and they said, you could be a running back. And that's great to see for, you know, guys, in today's world, in the college football world, I know he wants the ball in his hand and wants to play, but sticking with the team and believing in the coaching staff, believing what they're building here at Ball State and the success that they've had and wanting to be a part of it, I think is huge. Big third down here, third down and nine. Paddock's throw is a good one, and it's caught and dropped, incomplete. Is incomplete. 
Jason Jackson had it for just a second. Nate Bauer was back there with him. And Jackson slow to get up. And they run the sail route. They clear the outside receiver out the outside. And the number two receiver runs a corner route. And Jason Jackson's open, has it in his hands right there. Great throw by Paddock. That's the third drop we've seen tonight by the Ball State offense. They're looking for explosive big plays. And the inconsistency, the Toledo defense still stepped up with another three and out. I know this Ball State defense has given the offense some really good field position. The Cardinal offense just can't get anything going. Fair catch called for there by Beal. So Toledo will now have their opportunity. 8.54 to go. Back in a moment. Let's take a look at tonight's player spotlight brought to you by Tide. Well, Carson Steele has had a heck of a night. How about back-to-back 190-yard -back games on the ground for him? Yeah, and he, he set his career record last week, was the MAC Player of the Week on offense, and he's done it again, broke that career high tonight in, in their biggest game of the year, and that's what you want, big players stepping up in big games. Toledo's offense, been a little bit sluggish here of late. They give it to the big back, Penny Boone. And he'll lose a yard or make it lose a couple of yards on that handoff. Great read by Sidney Houston. The Buck, he sees it right there, beats the tight end across his face, shoots up the field. The Buck linebacker gets up field and makes the tackle. You expect that from number 36. Finn coming near side and make great adjustment, but can't hold on to the football. Torres bobbled it as he fell out of bounds. It'll be incomplete. And now we're seeing this both sides right now, opportunities. Great job, Daquan Finn. They, they create a little double move to get the tight end by himself down the sideline. He's got the balls right there in his hands, and he, oh. he's got to finish that catch. Torres came in with just one catch on the year for one yard. The third down. Finn has plenty of time to throw, goes to the wide side of the field, and it's incomplete. Nick Jones back there in coverage, and it's fourth down, and here comes this Toledo punt team. But I thought Daquan Finn got off. He, he started his read in the boundary. I think he got off his tight end a little bit too early, going back out there to the field. If you look right here, Jamal Turner. Yeah, I thought he had Jamal Turner on the corner route right there. Got off it a little bit early one-on-one. -on -one. Went back out to the wide side of the field. Was a little late on that throw and sailed it high. Batsky's punt is down at the Ball State 37, first and 10 Cardinals. 7.49 to go here in the fourth quarter. Ball State will have it at the 37-yard line. Now that the Houston Astros have locked up the World Series, all attention focused on football and in the college world. It is a busy, busy week. Of course, there's some more MAC action coming your way. Northern Illinois and Western Michigan tomorrow night, 7 o'clock Eastern on the U, then on ESPN2. It's Buffalo and Central Michigan Thursday. How about a little Tulsa Memphis action? East Carolina and Cincinnati on Friday. And then, of course, LSU, a team that has crept up in the college football playoff rankings. The most wonderful time of the year. They've got football every single night. Paddock on the run. He's hit and a flag comes out. Max and Hook with the hit on Paddock. Well, how about the job? Brian Kelly's done at LSU. Amazing in his, in his first year buying in. That's why he went there to get those players to play in big games. Holding offense number 54. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. That East Carolina Cincinnati game is an exciting one. On Friday night, big week for the AAC this week. And that you have Tulane UCF on Saturday. Big week for that league. 
puts it first down and 20. Ethan Crow right there just kind of gets him wrapped up and on the scramble that's called for the hold. Here's Steele. Pick up a couple of yards. Well, this game has turned into a defensive struggle. And for Toledo, this is a team that came in leading the MAC, averaging 36 points a game, 25th in the country, averaging over 400 yards of offense. They just haven't been in rhythm all night long. Paddock steps up, and that one should have been picked off right into the hands of Zachary Ford, and he can't hang on to it. Yeah, it looks, it looks like him, him and Steele were not there. You see him talking right there. Not on the same page on that. I think Paddock expected them to break in. Or... He's looking up as a check down, and you see him. He thought, he thought Steele was going to keep going. I don't know right there. They're just not on the same page. They gotta be careful here on third and long. Paddock 11 of 25 for 61 yards. Going deep down the middle, overthrows everybody. Was trying to hit Abdul Rahman. It's incomplete, and it'll be another punting situation for Ball State. Yeah, and they took a deep shot on Quinion Mitchell right there. Quinion can fly. He was actually, uh, I, you know, they they got him down there out of Williston, Florida. At your camp At our Florida. camp. We were, Stole they came down. From Toledo came down to camp. That coaches come down to the camp. And Quinion was a guy that we loved. He could fly, and they, they saw him, and they, they loved what he did. Gave him a scholarship, and it's paid off for him. He's a, he's a, he's a playmaker in their secondary. That's the kind of guy you are, right? Invite some coaches down, let him pick some talent right in your backyard. <laughs> Just trying to help the kids out. I always want to try to help kids out. So Ball State's defense coming back on the field. One of their best players on the defensive side is Cole Pierce. For more on his story, let's go down to Taylor. Yeah, guys, for a game that's been so heavily defense, they are without one of their best in linebacker. Cole Pierce, he went down with an injury early in the second half and obviously has not returned. I watched him in the medical tent for quite some time. They were dealing with his left ankle. He came out on the sideline, tried to run, but was unable. But look, this guy has been over here vocal, calling out checks, communicating to these guys, doing everything he can from the sideline. That's a tough blow for this Ball State defense, second on the team in tackles. He'll get that one out of Jerwan Newton. And that's one of their best plays in the last few series as they'll pick up the first down out over the 40-yard line. Feels like they've been backed up around the 20-yard line pretty much this whole entire second half. Yeah, it's, it's been a ball control kind of field position second half back and forth. Ball State's had great field position. Hasn't capitalized. Now Toledo has the field position. Let's see if they can capitalize here late in the game. Man, boy, he has all day to throw. Coming near side, that one right through the hands of Jawan Newton. He was battling back there with Nick Jones. They have been locked up arm in arm all evening. And I'll tell you what, Daquan Finn right there, he had Blankham see right down the middle of the field. You see him come open right there, breaking off the quarter safeties. Went for the one-on-one -on -one matchup to the to the other side. You know, and you wonder if he's being out, missing some of these reps, just kind of out of sync with some of this with the receivers and these reads. Micah Kelly to pick up a few yards, brought down by Clayton Call, who's up to eight tackles tonight. Cole Pierce left the night after eight tackles. Let's go down to Taylor. Yeah, guys, it's obvious that Devon Finn has not felt good for majority of this game. I've watched him closely on the sideline, his mannerisms. He's limping, he's clearly in pain, but every time a trainer or coach comes to ask if he wants out, he says no, he's gotten up, spoken with his offensive line, encouraged his receivers. This guy's a fighter and will not come out of this game. Micah Kelly couldn't fight his way out of that tackle. They'll lose five, and here comes the Toledo punt team. That is the... Clayton Cole with his with with his partner Cole Pierce out of the game. 
Clayton call right there, unbelievable. Read the screen, ran it down, stayed inside out on the tackle, made a great play. That is the third tackle for loss by Sidney Houston. Fair catch called for at the 20 yard line. Something's got to give here. There's 4.53 to play. We're tied at 21. The winner will control their destiny in the MAC Western Division. Hi, I'm Scott Van Pelt. Coming up on Sports Center, Reese Davis stops by to break down all the movement, the latest rankings. TCU's four. Their head coach, Sonny Dyke, stops by to talk about that. College hoops is two days old. We've got an emergency bad beats coming. Too close to call in Toledo. Good finish coming. And listen, Scott, I'm available to break down the punting situation tonight. We've had <laughs> nine straight drives ending with a punt, 21 total punts tonight. And uh, it's been kind of ugly here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, both teams with only one first down each in the fourth quarter. They just can't get anything going. It seems like if anybody can punch this in here, that'll be the game winner. Paddock slings it out of bounds, incomplete. He's now 11 of 28 for just 61 yards. Boy, there's and, just and been nowhere, no, nowhere to go right there's there. There's no I separation. Mean, they, they were just locked down on the outside right there. Um, that was that Jacquez, was that Jacquez Stewart uncovered on that one? Or, and uh, oh, Jason Jackson could not get off the coverage. Second down. Here's Steele. They've bottled him up for the most part here in the second oh, half. In the first half, Steele had 112 yards rushing. And he came out with that great, that first drive looked really impressive. And then uh, just since that first drive, have not been able to get anything going offensively at all. Big third down here. Quick hitter. That one is caught by Johannes Tyler, who keeps his consecutive games with a catch streak alive. It's up to 35 in a row now. Zachary Ford brings him to the turf. Yeah, and, and you, you look at Ball State's own, they're max protecting right there. And, and you know, Carson Seal's a great guy in the passing game, and we haven't seen him get him involved. They're, they're kind of max protecting, keeping him in in protection, running three-man routes, and Toledo's all over. So our tenth straight drive that has ended with a punt. Adam Beal back to return. He stands at the 30-yard line. It's a good driving kick to the near sideline. Beal will return it. He's out to the 35, and he gets stood up and wallop right there. Flag comes in. Marline Judge, about 30 yards away, heaves a flag. Jack Beebe there on that special teams tackle. Looks like it might be a face mask right here. It, let's see what they they go with here. That'd be a big call and, and give play the ball about midfield. During the return, personal foul, face mask, kicking team. 15-yard penalty for the end of the run. First down. Boy, Toledo needed something positive to happen, and they just got it with free 15. Take a look, take it, the whole group. Boy, that's a close one right there. That was awful tight looking. You know, we don't have the angle that the official had right there. But Toledo, let's see if Daquan Finn right here. They get great field position. 
need something to get it going. Flushed out of the pocket on that bad ankle, just throws it out of bounds. That'll be incomplete. And you could just see he doesn't look comfortable. I mean, he's so dynamic, extending plays, and with his feet, and being able to scramble. You saw even right down there, if he could have gotten around the edge, there was no one left down the sideline. But he's really playing on one leg out there tonight. Yeah, and here's a guy that averages 64 yards a game on the ground. He leads the team in rushing, but he has rushed it eight times for just 10 yards. And one tonight. of the, the top quarterbacks in yards per carry as well, and he just doesn't have it tonight. There's Micah Kelly trying to turn the corner, and he dives close to that 40-yard line where the line to gain is, and they will spot him at the 41, so it'll be third down and about a yard. So looks like they're going to go tempo here on third down and short, try to get up, not let Ball State have time to get lined up. Clock goes under three minutes. Off the right side, first down by Micah Kelly. Took a shot at the end of that play, but he gets it to the 36. That'll move the chains. You know, big first down, and you watch the clock right now. This is the same direction. Clucky had an opportunity on a field goal near the end in the second quarter and pushed it right from 47. I think they'd like to get it a lot closer than that if they're going to try a game-winning field goal here at the end. Couple of tight ends. Taking their time here, though. Looks like an old Wisconsin Badger formation. Left side, Micah Kelly. First down to the 25-yard line. Well, they just lined up and blocked it. It's really the first time tonight we've, we've seen them, them get a clean run like this. Great job up front. They're able to set the edge right here, get the ball outside. Great job by the, the tight end, setting the edge, sealing it, getting the ball on the perimeter. For Kelly. One. I'm surprised they're going slow right here, though, and, and gonna, looks like maybe put it on the field goal kicker here at the end. Run it to the right side, Kelly. There's a flag that comes in, and this could be a tough penalty for Toledo if that's a hold in the middle of that line of scrimmage. Clock will stop with 132. Both teams have their full complement of Holding timeouts. Offense, number 55. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. Well, that's Kendall Major. They'll back him up 10 yards. Well, and penalties have come at the most inopportune time for Toledo all night long. Let's see, right guard right here on the down block, the run and counter. It's beat across his face. He's got to, it ends up yanking him down from behind. He's got to stay square on that block, even though he's a down block. You want to keep your shoulders square on that and stay square on that block and not turn the body in the hole. So now it's first down and 20. Finn on the run, throws near side, pass is caught. Jerwan Newton with a big time catch inside the 15, down to the 13 yard line, a gain of 22. That's a great job on that. They've loved this little pull the guard out in front on the play action, get him on the move outside the pocket. They run the smash route, a flat underneath, a stop hitch underneath with the corner over the top. Great job, great throw. And Juwan Newton, great hands catch, ca catching the ball with his hands, getting one foot inbounds. Huge first down in field goal range now. Micah Kelly in the backfield alongside Finn. They'll run it with Kelly. He's inside the 10 down to the seven yard line. Timeout taken now by Ball State. Clock at 122. I'll tell you, as a coach, though, and, and, and Coach Candle the same way, you want to score a touchdown right here. You don't want to put it on your kicker to have to win the game for you right here. If you if you have to, you have to. But, boy, you'd like to punch this in, get a touchdown. Your high-scoring offense, you have the number one scoring offense in the MAC, and you really want to get it the touchdown here and not have to put it. You know, Clucky's been really good. You don't want to have to put it on him to win the game in this situation. You get the ball inside the 10-yard line. Right, Ball State's defense has been very good tonight. 
holding this high-powered Toledo offense well below their season average of 36 points a game. But right now, their back's literally up against the wall. On second down and six. Line to Gaines right around the two-yard line. Finn will throw it to the end zone. Touchdown. Jamal Turner from eight yards out. The third passing touchdown of the night for Daquan Finn. Third time this season he has thrown for three touchdowns. We said they wanted to punch it in the end zone. That's a huge, huge play. They wanted to finish it with the score. Boy. See right here. Hit. Good. You see him coming across the formation there on the Nate. Yes, sir, Toledo Rockets, 28. The Ball State Cardinals, 21. Daquan Finn has now thrown for 301 yards, 21 of 38, three touchdowns, and one interception. And you look at Jamal Turner coming across the formation on the naked from the other side all the way across the fake. You can see the pain that Daquan Finn's in right there, but gets out there on the fake, on the naked. Perfect throw, leads Jamal Turner out in front. He's able to catch turn up, get the ball into the end zone, and that's what Toledo wanted to get out of that drive is put the ball in the end zone and not make it close. Here it is, the fake. Freezes the defense a little bit. Perfect throw on the outside so he can catch it, turn right upfield, get into the end zone. Jamal Turner, the athletic tight end, makes the grab and puts Toledo in the lead with 118 to go. They can, they're feeling it here right now, that Mac West title. Well, for Jason Candle and this Toledo team, they need to hold on for a minute and 18, and they will almost assuredly write their ticket to Detroit in the MAC championship game. They have not won a MAC championship since 2017. They're looking for their seventh trip to the MAC championship game, if they can hold on here. Yeah, uh, uh, they need a win tonight. And any other win the rest of the way gets them there, or any loss by Western Michigan, who they will play the last week of the season. It's a big one, though, for them. They, they have Bowling Green next week, and right down I-75, not far from here. And that is a big, big game. The Toledo Bowling Green game is a big game. On first down and 10, Paddock will throw to the outside. That one is incomplete. He was trying to go to Cozy and That was already into that Ball State bench before the big tight end was able to even turn around. And again, this secondary from Toledo has done a great job matching up. The receivers, the tight ends, have not been able to get any separation for Ball State all night long and not even be able to use their size. They've done a great job with their matchups. Pocket collapses. That one is almost picked off. It would have been a pick six for sure by Mitchell, who already has two pick sixes. Matter of fact, in one game, he had four interceptions, and two of them went back to the house. What a great break on the ball. Paddock's, you see him a little late with the throw outside. And Mitchell breaks on it and had it. The pick six just couldn't make the catch. He had those four interceptions against Northern Illinois. Paddock deep down the middle, pass is caught. Big time reception from Brady Hunt across midfield. They will spot that one at the 47 yard line. The clock will stop at 104 for a moment. That's Paddock's best throw at night on the four verticals. Had the big tight end right down the middle, put it right on the money. And they're right back on the ball going again. Same play. Going for it all down the far side, incomplete. Nick Presley, the freshman, just couldn't catch up to it. Nick Second and ten from the Toledo 47 yard line. 54 seconds to play. Ball state with a couple of timeouts. 
This team has rallied back this year four times from double-figure deficits. Not double figures tonight, but they know how to rally. Boy, miscommunication there completely as Dean Tate turned inside, ball went outside. Yeah, that's a, they're just not on the same page. See Paddock hitting his chest saying, hey, okay, I, that, that's a, give me the next play, I'm all right. He, he's waited a long time for this opportunity. Coming in as a, as a fifth year senior, waiting his turn, stuck it out, never transferred, stuck with the program. He knows that's on him. He said, like, give me the next play. I'm ready to go. I'll, I'll, I'll make the next one. Paddock. He is dropped back at the 44 yard line. Jamal Hines with the sack, the fourth of the game for this Toledo defense. It's a loss of eight. The Cardinals will take their second time out. Great job, just a one-on-one -on -one rush. You see Paddock start to drift a little bit outside the pocket right there. And Hines using his size to get around the edge, get his hands on him and make the tackle. Great play. This defense, you know, this Toledo defense has been fantastic defensive front all night long. They've held Ball State under 300 yards of offense. And they're one play away from being in the driver's seat for the Mac West title. For Hines, that's his, now has 20 and a half career sacks. 44 career tackles for loss, which is the fifth best among active players. Would love one more right here. It is fourth down at 18. Paddock steps up into that pocket, heaves it down the middle of the field, and that one is picked off. Max and Hook with the interception to seal it for Toledo. There is a flag down at the 43 yard line. So hold on just a second. That's, it might be a roughing the passer yeah. right here after the throw. Did somebody go low on? During the Paddock? interception return, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Return team number 91. 15 yard penalty from the end of the play. First down Toledo. It was a penalty after the interception occurred, so Toledo will keep the ball. Yeah, you see it right here. After, so after the ball has changed hand, 91 with the blind side block, you can't do that. That's totally unnecessary right there. You got the game one, game over, just go celebrate with your teammates. You don't like to see those plays. After, after playing such a great game, you don't like to see those plays, but Great interception. Paddock just trying to make something happen. Forces the ball down the field. Interception. First turnover created by Toledo on the day. And they're now in complete control of their destiny here in the MAC West. Daquan Finn did not run it like he has been running all season. He'll finish with 10 yards on the ground, but he did what he needed to through the air. 21 of 38, 301, and three touchdowns tonight and gutted it out. Came in with a sore shoulders, leaving with a bad ankle. Ball State takes their final time out of the game right here. Make Toledo just have to snap it one more time. But I tell you, what an effort tonight by Daquan Finn. Obviously coming back from a shoulder injury early in the first quarter. Has some injury to his right angle, battles it out, not able to use his, his legs, which I know he's such a dynamic athlete. We know he's a great passer, but not being able to use his legs, guts it out, toughs it out, and finds a way to help this team get his win and probably put themselves in the MAC championship game. And that will do it. The final snap of this game, the clock will run out, but not on Toledo as their hopes and dreams of playing for a MAC championship are clearly in front of them. Mike New and company will hope for some better luck down the stretch as they could not win for back-to-back -back trips here to the glass bowl, and they will lose this one 28-21. Well, an exciting night. They have a young team, and Ball State's got a great future with, with Mike New, but they, I'll tell you what, 
Toledo, Coach Candle, they, they have got a program here. They're going to their 13th consecutive bowl game. Looks like they're in the driver's seat to play for another MAC championship. And they have some exciting young players right here. Great win for them. Great win for the Toledo Rockets tonight. 28-21, our final score. Toledo wins it here in the Glass Bowl, trying to chase down a 2022 MAC championship. Steele did his part. He ran for almost 200 yards tonight, but it wasn't enough as Toledo wins it. So for Dan Mullen, Taylor Davis, I'm Dave Neal saying so long from Toledo. Time for Sports Center with Scott Van Pelt.